Hello, everybody. Welcome back. As it gets close, it snaps into place there in that <gasps> first circle. And I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, do you know where you are right now? Yes, in Brunk Hollow, a town full of scoundrels and reprobates. But if it's an emergency, you can knock. We won't necessarily answer, but we might. Who are you looking for is not here. You haven't seen a sea elf. No. I'll you're on my him. side too, but you're useless. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I no. meant. But and, uh, it's true. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tabletop Knot. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go. We hope you had a wonderful week. We hope you had a wonderful Halloween. Uh, yes. Happy November. It's be fun. Wonderful. Marathon Sunday. I yeah, hope you yes. didn't see any terrifying Grinches out on the street. Or condoms. <laughs> what were you? <laughs> Erica labeled you as I was just see through. I'm embracing it. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> That would be a very transparent condom. Is that weirder or less weird? I don't know. Let's not get it. <laughs> I... Here. Join us in the Discord. Anyway. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make a thread for we'll it. We'll discuss. <laughs> um, tonight we are coming in with uh, chapter eight. And a multiple of four, of course, means our second notch in soda. Oh, so baby. Uh, yeah. I, I was scared for a second. I didn't know where you were going with that. Uh, <laughs> Every mean? four episodes means we, we replace, replace a cast. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye, TC. Um, it is a great, <laughs> it's, 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 a great uh, it's a great episode for notch and soda because we do have TC uh, doing a little investigation in the cemetery. Yeah. But he seems to be so focused on a, a nothing burger. <laughs> Big old nothing burger. <laughs> Um, and the rest of the crew has reported to the Lucky Heathen, where they hope to meet the Monteros for the first time mm. and uh, kind of get a feel for them. We've met a lot of the major players in town. Uh, the Monteros, not yet, and then uh, stand out. And then Bison, Bison as well. Yet yeah. to meet Bison. Did we ever confirm that it was a free lunch? Did anybody? Anyone oh, in the no, chat? no, no. Because there was a free that. lunch. Kate gets to be the one who asks about <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Um, even though I'm not there. How's it goes? But, here uh, but before we dive into the campaign, we have a little bit of uh, shout outs, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Twitch stream on Twitch. Uh, thank you for joining <laughs> us. We also have a podcast version if you like to listen uh, instead of watch. That goes live on Tuesdays. The YouTube video goes live on Tuesday if you are a YouTube member or Patreon uh, uh, subscriber. Um, and then Friday is when it goes live for everybody else on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, we're on all of those social medias that you love and hate <laughs> to love. You hate to love them, but you do. So at Tabletop Notch on all those, um, there's always little funny clips and some of the games from the mid uh, midstream intermission. You'll see those on oh, there. Um, uh, 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 background, funny clips. Uh, Stuff like that. We've yet to have a Brunk Hollow Powerball winner, but I'm feeling Ooh. it. I'm, it's, gonna it's gonna happen. It's, it's tonight's tricky night. One. Before the end of the year, I'm saying it now. I bet that there'll be a winner before the end of the year. Mm. Well, I think I the odds are not with you. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm the only one Powerball. who knows the results. It's true. No, it's lock and key. If you want I forgot all the results. It's like you have yeah. the Oscar envelopes in your closet. Mm -hmm. got, yes. got the answers. Ooh, I'm so important. La La Land. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 snuck in there uh, is ways to support us. Um, oh, yes. Like uh, um, the best ways are watching right now. Thank you. Um, but Patreon, uh, there's a couple of different tiers there. There's now YouTube memberships if you like to watch us there. Yes, there's... we are. We are two thirds of the way to getting thirty members on YouTube, and if we get to thirty, apparently YouTube is telling me. That we get extra moolah. Yeah. So oh, we're all retired. Find us yes. on these yes. boobs. You yeah. get you get the access to the nacho <laughs> sodas, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, and then uh, early access to the videos, like Anthony's been saying. Yeah. I just became a member. I saw. Thank it's you pretty, so much. It's a pretty cool plan. <laughs> yeah. Do the early ones get like a founding member badge or something like that? You do. Oh my god. They do. I, I do. All of them. I, I'm making I six more accounts. <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, to wrap up, uh, Patreon, YouTube memberships, Spotify subscriberships, yes. TikTok Subscri subscribership, TikTok. Oh. Um, those are all yes. really great ways to support us, as well <laughs> as thank you. Most of all, joining you, yes. joining us here. Oh, please just yeah. join. Say we have, which stuff. is actually more than I thought, three 
podcast subscribers, which Ooh. I cannot Ooh. access the names of. So if oh. you're listening <laughs> Mystery. and you are one of the three, or thank take you. credit for someone else's. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that's it, so true. All three are mine. <laughs> <laughs> all my separate account. Alan, totally you gotta stop out. doing that. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, but tonight, for subscribers on Twitch, you're going to get to see a very special Notch and Soda number two. Soda. Yeah, we're going to hang around yeah. and talk about the, the show and, and what, what's going on. And if you subscribe on TikTok, we'll be doing it on that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so ways to ways to see that. Okay. Watching it right now on Twitch. Well, not right now. In three hours-ish yeah. on Twitch or TikTok if you're a subscriber. And then after the fact, it's going to drop on Thursday for YouTube members, uh, a Patreons of Top Notch tier, and subscribers on Spotify. I think that's all. The last one was a blast. We loved having you guys. Yeah. We, we'll bring up questions from the chat. We'll say hi. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can answer and what we maybe can't answer. But we, we love the. <laughs> yes, it's oh. sponsored by Whoa, Saltines. Hodge and Soda sponsored by Saltines. It's, it's actually ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you into like, ASMR, you like, subscribe, yeah. baby. Um, Patreon or where, yes. where oh, are we? Oh, are we oh yeah. And the, the thing that we most recently dropped on Patreon, which is very exciting, Matthew is a genius. <gasps> Oh. Oh. Very. Hey, how come this one's Doxley? No fair. Because it's, um, it's mine. We have a for our. Don't show my stuff. <laughs> secrets. Just you, you just it. said there's secrets oh my on it. Oh, there is. Yes. In any case, oh my God. <laughs> it is a Broncolo themed uh, character sheet, uh, which is we really liked how it turned out. It has all the yeah. essential stuff. Give me a pack. So and it's, it's also there's a, so there's a version where it's just like an image, but also. Stop looking at my stuff! Oh, sorry. I just, it looks Wait, so cute. Like, you introduced it as this great thing to look at, yeah, and here we are oh, looking you, at it. Oh, you can look at it, because oh, that wouldn't surprise haven't. you. Um, but There's a blank oh, one. Oh, <laughs> yay. But also, if you like to use digital character sheets, we used um, Adobe Acrobat to make it fillable, so you can oh, very nice. fill it in. Form you want fillable. Adobe Creative okay. Cloud. Creative not have to deal with the pen and the pencil. <laughs> Um, so that's what we dropped for Big Notch Tier and Higher for, for the month of October, and then uh, we're working on what's going to be next for November. So let's cook it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it. Did we? Uh, I have to thank folks, obviously. Oh, I wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Ali Slayer, it was your birthday yesterday, and she said oh. she was bringing a bunch of new people tonight oh, to that's watch. Right. Thank so, you hi, awesome. new people. Oh, hello. Hi, hello. Ali Slayer's Happy friends. Birthday, Happy Ali. birthday, Ali Slayer. Hi. I, I guess the one thing I missed, if that was brought up on Discord, the Discord, join the Discord. Oh, there yeah. we go. I knew there was something. I mentioned it in regard to condoms. We, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, yes. so yes. Yes. Super yes. join the Discord to find Discord's the best. Uh, per people's birthdays and which condoms are best. <laughs> and most Oh, no. <laughs> That's not what it is. That is. That's not what it is. Not. Please don't. How am I going to learn? Okay, uh, before we even signed on, Raw Knight uh, gave out 10 community subs. Holy Thank shit. you so much. Oh if you're watching God. later, oh, Wiz Renan gave out five community subs. Alpha R79 gave out five community subs. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Guys. Teeny one, weenie one, peeny. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's teeny one. Teeny weenie, peeny. They got as close as they could. Yes. Yes. Teeny, teeny, teeny subscribe. Teeny Thank you so much. Oh my god. Uh, uh, 139 resubscribed, and then hold on, I have to refresh because I saw it. Did you do Poco Doco? Uh, no, bits weren't working. Oh, oh okay. bits. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, oh yes, here we go. Uh, Golden Dagger did 1,050 bits. Thank you so much. Oh my god. Wow. Five out community subs. The Cage King resubscribed. Low Brass Guy, Low Brass Guy did 1,000 bits. Thank um, you. Teeny weenie, peeny. Uh, Pogodoka resubscribed, Half Baked resubscribed, and then gifted a sub. Thank you oh all gosh. so, so very much. Oh, that's amazing. The Teeny Weenie Peeny, I'm so happy for Thank you. you. Teeny Weenie Peeny. Was, um, was, there was numbers we, added because the name was taken. Teeny Weenie Peeny yeah. confirmed so, was taken. Oh already. my gosh. So, so Teeny One Weenie One. <laughs> I really love that for you. And <laughs> I also just want to say that we forgot to talk about merch. Oh, oh my gosh. Merch. 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 We've got oh, so much. You we're we're going to be working on a new uh, new pattern that Pokodoka is working very hard on. Oh. Doing amazing so, um, I see what? I want to see it. I saw it. <laughs> I, don't, I, have, I have nothing to produce. <laughs> um, so go ahead and check that out. We'll get some merch. We'll get some and, yeah. Awesome. Low Brass Guy's Thousand Bits was specifically to say don't die. Oh, to me? Oh. So I'm not allowed to die tonight. You get a plus 0. 0.4 to your next <laughs> roll, which rounds down to zero. <laughs> oh, oh, so close. <laughs> <laughs> However, before we throw it over to oh, the before we throw thing. it over to the uh, intro and the recap, um, we're doing a new thing. Last campaign for people who joined us, uh, inspiration was exceedingly rare. It was just something that we didn't really play as much around with. Yeah. 
Inspiration's gonna be given out a little more in this campaign. It's gonna be a little more frequent. Prove it. In addition to that. <laughs> Prove it. In addition to that, um, we're taking a little page out of the um, Baldur's Gate 3 book, and the inspirations are sort of achievements, sort of unlocking in-game achievements as a sort of, Ooh, a, we're not the first person to think of this, but we thought it was a cute idea. And I have two inspirations to award from last I'll week's take episode. Stop, <laughs> stop, you, stop! You were the first one to say. Uh, yes. No, 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 I, I, I love you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's so hot. So, um, it, I'm awarding a couple inspiration for sort of strange, cool, interesting, feats that happen. No, uh, the first the one is an achievement called All Spar Performance. Yes! Oh. Yeah. Which is, oh, the achievement yeah. is evade all of Daphne Eusebio's attacks upon reuniting with her. Oh, yes. oh, oh, so that, that allows you to award it to Kate, and uh, that gives you, at the bottom it says, you know, you can get a re-roll on a d20 roll. Yeah, no, these <laughs> <achievements>. <laughs> this feels like when I won like <laughs> academic awards in high yeah. school. The other one is an achievement called Pursuit Yourself. Without arousing the suspicion of other party members, pass all ability checks in your attempt to follow the unknown figure as they make their way to the yes. side. Guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> that side of the table is kind of Feels cool. like the side of the table is succeeding. This is cool. Cool. literally just inspiration. <laughs> yes, it's just inspiration. Wow. Um, but we thought it would be cute if we could collect. So you can look back at the end and see all the achievements that. And it has that's a little so cool. date. Like, it has a little date that says unlocked 10 29 Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So cute. Inspiration. So we have little inspirations um, that can be used throughout the campaign. Okay. Uh, so you <laughs> feel free to. Uh, inspiration works slightly different in this campaign. Unlike regular inspiration, you can have more than one of them. Uh, so you're not limited to one inspiration. However, Wait, what? <laughs> you're not limited to one. That Because I didn't want to not be able to give out an achievement if you earned one. And have um, used it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can collect more than one, however, you can only apply one to a given role. You can't save up 10 inspirations yeah. and then yeah. burn them I all will get <laughs> yeah. 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 that. <laughs> you also I'm have serious. to wait until you complete a shorter long rest before using another. So you okay. can't just okay. spam Aww. inspiration. Save seven Short rest for the last fight. Generous. That's, that's yeah. pretty generous. That's pretty. So you can't double inspo? No, you cannot that's, double inspo. And that's these very guys. generous, Matt. <laughs> You're gonna be mad. When what? When I die? Yeah, no, when <laughs> inevitably. When you roll bad. Someone's gonna need that inspiration tonight. I yeah. always. Can I pick honor his pocket and get his, and get his inspiration? His achievement. You rummage through his pockets and you're like, what? Bring the... it back to your goal. Inspiration. Okay, we've handed out the inspiration. Wow, we've done the business. Cool. It is time for us to f flip it over. <laughs> to what? I was going to, to send it over to the recap and the intro, and then we'll dive into chapter eight. That's right. Okay, all right. Everybody ready? We're ready. Uh, I'm so ready. Let us do the thing. Angela Bassett did the thing. I like this already. Mm. Previously, on Chapter 7, Lives Left Behind, Josie, a trusted timber, was dismayed to learn that Morna had not come to set up shop, but was in fact seeking out a supposed killer, and Kate sparred with her former classmate Daphne before acquiring a litany of leads and contracts that could put her on the fast track toward her alchemical pursuits. Doxley shared a terse farewell with Izzy, Ilian struggled with his loss of direction, and TC offered to handle a disreputable task at the behest of Maeve Crittenden, this just after bumping into the Warden's son and having a public dispute in the thoroughfare. As noon approached, the party gathered to speak with the Monteros, who were keenly interested in hearing about the cleric attack on the cusp, but TC's attention was drawn elsewhere when he seemed to spot someone he recognized heading toward the cemetery. What was so important that would cause our rogue to go rogue in the middle of the day? And Kate may think TC is a creep, but wasn't she the one who just spent hours watching Ilian sit alone by the riverbank? Stick around and find out on Chapter 8 of Drunk mm. Good boy.
baskets, <laughs> bookshelves, and burial urns. Pristine pans, pots, and platters perched atop a pantry cupboard. Slabs of stone that serve as solid surfaces for scrutiny and study. A faintly fuming furnace fixed into the far wall that furthermore features face masks and fitted footwear. An assortment of apparatus arranged artfully around an antiquated armoire, their application ancillary to the actual acts of assigning acreage to those advancing to the afterlife. This is what you see mm. when the door inches further and further open. Mm -hmm. Perhaps more spacious and better furnished than you might have guessed, looking at its unassuming exterior, but very notably lacking one important thing. People. There's nobody here. And yet you saw a face in the window just moments ago. At a cursory glance, there's no staircase or ladder leading up or down to other floors, nor a passage to another room, or even a closet big enough to hide inside. So this someone has seemingly made themselves scarce in an unconventional way. Despite its location just across the river from a few notable points of interest, thick walls and drawn curtains make this spot feel very isolated. And you do your best to steady your shaking hand as you shuffle tentatively forward. So you see the interior of this mm -hmm. mortuary. Nothing about it particularly out of the ordinary that you can tell at a you know, quick glance. A number of like three larger stone slabs that look like a body could be laid upon them if someone needed to dress the, the deceased or, or apply any kind of makeup or markings. A number of cupboards, shelves, cabinets, bookshelves. What do you do? I mean, there's nothing that looks like a doorway or a... That's the one door. The door I came in is the one door. Give me an investigation check. And I believe, oh. thanks to your feet, you get to make this with advantage. What? Oh. Let me just look real quick. <laughs> um, um, Delicious. I don't know why I'm his feet. Um, yes, I do. You're right. I, I do. I do. I do. Okay. Okay. Don't move on. Don't move on. Um, uh, advantage on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll the dice. Then. It's very. It's very um. Oh, um. Uh, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. Looking. Cool. Yeah. You take a few sort of tentative steps inside. Tentative steps that turn to. Maybe even fearful steps. Just maybe not entirely knowing what might be awaiting you in the room but nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Floorboards creak a little bit beneath your feet, but nothing unusual. Without touching anything, you just start to look around, trying to see any signs of someone having been here, any signs of something that could lead to another area. And there's two things that you notice right off the bat. First of all, on the third stone slab, so the farthest one from the front door that you just entered. You kind of look at the first one, nothing unusual about that. Look at the second one, don't see anything unusual. And the third one, you kind of do a quick once over because it looks very much like the first two, but then something catches your eye. And you kind of get down on one knee and you... And as you blow on it, a little bit of dust comes off and there's a very thin line that's in a kind of rectangular shape. So this stone slab is quite big because a body would be laid upon it. And you're kneeling, but it looks like there's a rectangular sort of cutout that could be maybe removed or, or shifted in some way. Okay. The second thing that you notice is as you're inspecting these three slabs, it's natural to kind of look around the room and you look up and above all three slabs is like a mirror. It's like a like a floor, floor length mirror, but it's on the ceiling. And this isn't... <laughs> Sorry. Shut up. This isn't terribly unusual. In a mortuary, especially if um, they don't have an assistant or something, there might be mirrors so that they can, you know, yeah. look inside or apply makeup or whatever without it being, a, you know, having to constantly cross over to other sides of, of the body. So the, the placement of the mirrors is not terribly unusual. However, on the mirror above the slab that you just looked at that has the little carved out rectangle, mm -hmm. 
that seems a little smudged on one side. And then the other two mirrors are perfectly clean. They look like they get, you know, wiped and cleaned daily. But this one has some kind of odd smudge shape markings that are a little difficult to see. It's out of reach. The, the ceiling, is, yeah, it's, it's on the ceiling, ceiling. yes. Okay. If you were to stand on the stone slab, you'd probably get, you could probably get close to it, but yeah. Okay. So those are the first things you see. All right, I'm gonna do another slow circle of that third slab, just really, you know, looking for marks on the floor, uh, by the slab, you know, taking a few more looks at the, at the, at the mirror. And I'll, out loud. Sir? <laughs> and I'll kind of put hands on the slab to see if there's any jiggle to it. It's quite sturdy. It's a big, solid hunk of stone there. I hope I'm not being too presumptive. You get up top and you kind of wait for a moment just yeah. to see if anything shifts or moves. Nothing. Seems very solid. You even kind of tap your foot a little bit mm -hmm. and it doesn't, I mean, it's stone, so it'd be harder to tell than if it was wood, but it doesn't like seem hollow or anything yeah. like that. Not immediately. It's pretty solid. Taking a close look. Reach up reach very up. carefully to the... You reach up and you touch the smudges and nothing happens, but you get a much better look at them from up here. And the light was very low in here, so it was a little difficult to tell at first. However, the smudges have take, uh, take on a certain shape. It looks like the smudges are actually like henna or some kind of uh, dye or something. So it looks like it's actually been drawn on, okay. not accidentally applied there, which okay. you might have sort of thought to begin with. Yeah. What you see is five symbols. <laughs> You see one sort of design, again, in this sort of black, sort of almost charcoal, but like a little more liquidous kind of ink texture. You see something that looks like a music note. And then you see four circles. Oh, this is what you see. <sighs> oh! Okay. Okay. And I can give one to you as well, just so you can have it. Thank you. After looking up at it and noticing exactly what the shapes are, you sort of dismount from the stone slab there. And now standing at one end of the long uh, sort of stone slab there, you kind of look up and you put your hand out and you can see kind of where your hand would sort of enter into the circle on the mirror or yeah. not. So it kind of matches up and you can see that kind of right in front of you on the stone slab is where those circles kind of match up with. Yeah. <sighs> can I go and kind of press, can I match my hand up with the first note and just kind of hover there? And if nothing happens, maybe press down. Nothing happens. <sighs> to the next circle, to the first circle. And press. Nothing happens. I'm gonna look around the room, uh, kind of in my immediate area here, to see if there's anything circular or anything that kind of would fit that kind of shape. Sure, give me an investigation check. <laughs> this, is this with advantage as well? It's not a looking for a hidden like compartment or right. or anything. Oh, so. Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. Well done. As soon as you see the circles on the ceiling, you're immediately sort of in, in hunting yeah. for circular objects <laughs> mode. Yeah. <laughs> and you're both um, pleased and dismayed to see that there are dozens of them. Yeah. There's ceramic bowls all around this place. And if you look inside some of the ceramic bowls, there's like some red powder, some green powder. Like it's makeup, like someone would apply to a corpse to kind of dress it mm -hmm. as a final kind of burial or presentation. And these these little ceramic bowls are everywhere. They're on tables, they're on shelves, they're on the bookshelf. They might be inside the cupboard. There's a closed cupboard and again, that armoire. So that they're all over the place. And all of them have different designs on them. Mm -hmm. They look like sort of hand painted. They seem rather old. They don't seem terribly new. They seem like sort of antique little ceramic bowls. All of them contain 
some kind of uh, symbol. And as you look from kind of ceramic bowl to ceramic bowl, you see the same pictures coming up over and over again. Okay. So there's duplicates of each of these, but every ceramic bowl has either mountains, eyes, suns, streams, feet, or rain. All of them have one of those types of designs yeah. on it. So they all have that kind of design on it. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my. You, got you got this. Got it. Solve the puzzle. Um, I'm going to gather um, four to six of, oh God, one of each of those. That's six. That's one. With the different symbols. You do so. And bring them over. There's kind of enough of a lip of this slab that I can put oh, yeah. it where it's not in that space mm -hmm. here. Yeah. It's quite large. <sighs> Line those up and. <laughs> we have such a lovely ambiance right now, but do I hear anything in the room? <laughs> uh, no. It's okay. Very, it's very quiet. Very quiet. Yes. Okay. I'm like. Mountains. Exactly. No. It is deathly silent in here. <laughs> Figure speech. TC's starting to like really just be aware of the sound of his own breathing in this room. Like, do I hear any music? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it was cold outside and it felt warm when I first got in here, but it's starting to feel fucking cold in here too. Um, I'm gonna take the eyeball bowl and kind of slide it into where it might fit into that first. Into that first one. You take the eyeball bowl and you get it close to that first, you're looking up at the ceiling because you have yeah. to kind of line them up. And as it gets close, you feel the slightest bit of pull as if it was almost magnetic in some way. As it gets close, it snaps into place there in that <gasps> first circle. And I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, oh shit. Oh, 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 it's your fuck, thing though. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Your thing. Uh, and <laughs> I don't think, uh, let me look up your feet here, just so I'm yeah, not, uh, yeah. um, um, Let me look at your feet. <laughs> let me look at your feet. <laughs> Show me your feet. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, you have advantage on this. Oh, yep. baby, okay, oh, okay. Man. Um, the first one was fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> 23. 23. Jeez, bro. As you put that one, that one, you don't even place it all the way there. You're you're holding it so lightly because it yeah. looks delicate, these yeah. the sort of ceramic bowls. And as it gets close, it like <laughs> snaps into place. And at that exact moment, you hear something and just dodge back and <laughs> you look down at your feet and there's a small dart that seems tipped Ooh. with some kind of liquid substance. You're not entirely sure where that came from in the ceiling. There's gaps in the wood, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> the, uh, looking at it real quick, does it look like it's tipped with anything? Uh, yeah, it looked like it had a little bit of liquid on that. Holy uh, fuck, tip. okay. Ooh. Fuck me. Um, uh. Maybe I won't keep that. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Now, now that it's there, it's there. It's not. If you reach out and yeah. you kind of move it, like you could pull it like away. It just had a little bit of like magnetic kind of, but yeah, you could, if you gave it a little effort, you could. But that's the only feedback. There wasn't any sound other than. It was the only feedback. The door. Oh my God, do these symbols look, do I recognize them as having any kind of pattern that, of grouping of? No. The song. Um, thinking back to my friend's little ditty, mm -hmm. do I know enough about music that... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the gears, oh, the gears are just turning. turned, man. You can see the oh, moment. Man. Deirdre, would you... Do you sing for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Will you allow that? Anna? Stop allow it. A, Stop it. Like no. If this works, I'm going to lose my mind. Let's go. Oh, Come on, buddy. I'm going to lose it. Ten. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I will say it's a very common hymn. Though. I know. It is. It is. <laughs> for people who are more religious. Uh, Don't you watch my Instagram video? Quiet you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to very carefully try to, um, just enough to give it and then take a quick step back. Nothing happens when you remove it. Put that one down. 
pick up the mountain one. And knowing that there's going to be kind of a pull, I'm going to like kind of come in from the top sure. and like give it like a. And as you drop it, sticks into place there yep. once more. No dart comes. Let's go. In addition, give me a perception check. <gasps> uh, um. It's 21. 21. As you took a quick step back just to make sure that nothing kind of yeah. came at you that you weren't expecting, you hear like a little something clicks or something, and something sounds like it opens. Like you hear like a spring noise, like a boom. Coming from? You look off to your right, and <laughs> on one of those bookshelves, that there's several of these bookshelves around, what opens up is what looks like a little music box. And inside, there's a couple kind of humanoid trinkets spinning about. Can I go over to that? You uh, can. And As you get closer, music begins to play. Oh, uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you explode! Of the <laughs> go back to the bowls. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the the waterway uh, the, the stream, if you will. Yes. Bowl and again, kind of carefully on the second one. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> PC takes take out his TikTok <laughs> device. <laughs> I put this in my likes and my saved. Um, oh my God. Folks not playing the game, our fandom probably has that information. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm gonna pick up the feet. Okay. Oh. Again. Okay. It feels that one sticks in place, and you look up to see if there's any kind of firing or mechanism, and then you smell something and oh God. step back. And you can give me a constitution save. Oh, oh no. <coughs> 15. 15. Okay. Did I fuck it up? <laughs> You take eight poison damage, <gasps> okay. which is, I believe, halved oh. because of your feet. <laughs> so as the gas begins to seep out, you your instincts kick in and you quickly, immediately start to wave your hands just to disperse the air a little bit while also kind of covering your mouth. <laughs> and and it, it's a very fine kind of yellowish mist that quickly kind of dissipates. Uh, give me a... Um, uh, give me a nature check. Nature? Yeah. 17. 17. You seem to recognize recognize these as yellow mold spores. It's like a, it's like a natural kind of toxin. Um, that okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's like a poison kind of, but uh, yeah, it can occur naturally in nature. But you resist the effects of it. You are not condition poisoned because you made the save on the throw, yeah. but you do take a little bit of poison damage. In addition to that, after the gas kind of disperses and finally you have a moment again, the room hasn't changed at all. Yeah. Nothing's changed, nothing's different. Take the eyeball back off. <sighs> 50 50, TC. <laughs> oh. Now take the sun. <laughs> oh, 
Give me a constitution oh save. Oh fucking hell, Anthony. Nine. Nine. Oh, no. Goodbye. Oh, no. You take ten halved poison yeah. damage. Oh, my God. oh boy. And you are poisoned now. Oh boy. So you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, and you're not sure how long that lasts, but <laughs> some of those yellow mold spores seep into your lungs. <laughs> Last bowl. I only have one left. These, the three of them are still connected, and there's only one of them that I haven't tried. Right? Yes. <laughs> and which one was that? It's just the we got? rain clouds. The rain clouds as it clicks into place. <laughs> Give me a Constitution saving throw. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as the gas seeps out, you take special note. There are multiples of all of these. Oh my god, yeah. Not all of the, there are multiple stream ones, multiple feet ones. Do, am I at disadvantage on this check? Uh, this is a saving throw, so no. Okay, 22. 22, that saves. You take uh, only seven half down to three. Okay. Stupid, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> this point sort of burning oh, yeah. in your lungs a little bit. <sighs> take that off and like rubbing my eyes mm -hmm. and going over to the other one. As you look up in the mirror now, you can see your eyes are kind of reddish. There's a little bit of like, oh, no. sort of dribble down your nose just from the running of your nose. And look for another mountain ball. Another mountain ball. Great. You look around the room, look through some of the stacks of ceramic bowls, find another mountain bowl. <sighs> Clicks into place and with a bit of vibration, <gasps> idiot. You did beneath you did your it. feet, something clicks, and a stone panel drops into the floor. It startles you a little bit, and it reveals a kind of narrow shaft leading down beneath this stone oh slab. No. The passage is small enough that you would need to crawl inside and then kind of maneuver your feet into a position where you can then climb down using the metal rungs that you can see in here. I want to do something. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but it's dark in there, and you don't know where it leads. But you can see you can see that there are some metal rungs, kind of in as going down into the ground. There. <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick look around to see if I see any potions, any, anything that could be either a healing potion or some kind of an antidote. Give me a give me a uh, investigation check. Investigation. Um, Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately you don't, however, you go over to the armoire, sort of the largest kind of closet in the room, and you go over and there's two handles, and you go to pull it open and it, it seems to be maybe locked or latched closed in some way, and as you peek into the small crack in the middle, it does seem like there's some bottles inside this armoire, so. Uh, is there a keyhole? Uh, there is a keyhole, yes. <sighs> Real quick, I'm, I'm gonna go back to the door that I came in, and okay. I just want to look for um, locking apparatus. If there's some system it, it, to lock the front door, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other than just a regular knob and keyhole, like are there like dead? Uh, there's not a deadbolt. Like there that. is a latch and what are those eye and latch eye locks? Yeah, eye hold. So yes, there is one of those. But, but you could lock. Nothing it. along any of the seams that looks more intricate than that. No. I go back to that. Back to the stairs. It's, it's a ladder kind of going. It's not stairs. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the it's very dark down there. Yes, it doesn't seem to be lit at all down there. I'm gonna take out a torch and my little tinder and <sighs> kind of hold it in at first. And it's difficult to kind of see, but it looks like it goes straight down for a little bit. <sighs> Coming down. <laughs> Just to let you know. As he maneuvers his way in, slowly you kind of wriggle your way further into the shaft. 
You get to the rungs and you slowly, even going down, like your back is scraping against the back. It's that narrow as you, and you're holding your torch kind of up a little bit, making sure that the smoke has somewhere to go up top. (laughs) Your feet finally touch down and you exhale kind of a sigh of relief. And now the tunnel proceeds horizontally, but it's barely wider than it was at the top. It means you have to kind of hunch and waddle through this little narrow passageway. Does it seem like there's only one way to go? Like It seems like there's only one way to go, yeah. So I will go that way, slowly. As you continue. Keeping an eye out for traps. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> give me like, two things. Give me a perception check and a stealth check. Disadvantage. Oh, these yes. are checks, yes. so. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. Perception <laughs> first. Yep. Um, oh. Um, 21. 21, I great. What? And then a stealth. Disadvantage. And my stealth. Oh, fudge. 13. 13, okay. You did announce yourself. <laughs> I did, that's true. <laughs> as, you proceed, <laughs> as you proceed forward, there isn't much to see. It's so narrow and uh, there, if there was a trap, you feel like you might, it might be fairly easy to see. There's no like pressure plates or anything that you know catches your eye. When it comes to trying to move quietly, because it's so narrow, like occasionally your shoulder will scrape against the side and it'll sort of, a little bit of dirt will kind of come trickling down. But other than that, you slowly proceed forward. As you continue, <laughs> it feels like this channel is kind of sloping gently upward the whole time. And feelings of both fatigue and frustration start to build as you go further. 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 Finally, a modicum of light peeks through up ahead. And it looks like natural light, not torch nor candle, which all but confirms this kind of gnawing feeling that you're not about to enter into someone's secret cellar. You know an escape route when you see one. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, as you reach the end of the tunnel, there's some tall grasses that you push aside and you reemerge on the surface. You look over your shoulder and you can see the creek and the edge of the cemetery a few hundred feet behind you. And as you brush off the dirt clods from your shoulders, you wonder what they might have gone from here. Oh, no! I just got juked. With that perception check, I will also say that as you emerge and you sort of in a breathing heavy sort of frustration, you look around and attach to a tree branch just off to your left, Someone seems to have left something. Ah! <sighs> oh, oh, words! <laughs> oh my god. Anthony reads the note. He nods silently to himself. <laughs> <laughs> TC, oh my god! <laughs> For the podcast. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. Oh my god. I, I need to I mean, it's, it's been about real time here. We're, 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 I'm like you probably spent 10, about 15 minutes. Maybe a little, we'll say, given the rummaging through the place, like yeah. like half an hour. You've it, From the time you left the group, it's been uh-huh. about half an hour, we'll say. All right. Maybe, yeah. Um. Take it. I like it. just another really nervous look around. I mean, you're kind of out yeah. in the sort of trees just outside of Broncalo, the sort of lightly wooded area be just beyond the cemetery. Okay. Just stuff it away. And, um, oh, wow. Not nice. Head back into town. Nonchalant. <laughs> right as you reach the edge of the yeah. cemetery. <laughs> uh, um, the alien and then I'm actually gonna head towards. Uh, did we get it? See it? Um, good as gold. D- did they have things like like antidotes and things like that there? Uh, they p- presumably have something that would okay. a basic thing like healing potion. Those are right. very basic items. Okay. That then I'm actually gonna head in that direction. First. Okay, great. Yeah. Start to head in that direction. We're gonna hop on over. Oh, I, need, I just need a moment. Good <laughs> job, you did it. Getting a break, like. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to give us the lyrics there? Oh uh, my god. <laughs> it's, 
Uh, well, it, it not super great lyrically. Um, may the gods take you up the mountain. May the gods take you up, up the stream. With your feet on the ground, the do gods will surely take you down. Let the gods take you up the mountain. Mm -hmm. So mountain I, stream. But there is mountain. another verse that would have really fucked you up. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's another <laughs> verse. Of well, course there well, is. Well, there was yeah, only four circles. That the <laughs> eyes of the rain go on the stream to the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the sun shines. I got to play the little music box version. Oh my god, uh, very cool. that was so cool. <sighs> wow. That's so oh, creepy. That was a lot of work. <laughs> Damn. I this is the tune playing in TC's head as he goes over yeah. to uh, get his gold. <laughs> ooh, ooh, baby. <laughs> Just like looking over my shoulder here and there. <laughs> Never forget it now. Never. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Ding dong. Okay, yeah. With a feeling of confusion more than concern as TC abruptly excuses himself back in the direction of Paramount Lodgings, the rest of you enter into the Lucky Heath. Some of you for the first time, and others comparing the atmosphere to your previous visit. There's a small three-person band strumming quietly in the corner, while others push chips and flip cards, and you get the sense that the people currently seated here are some of Broncolo's most faithful gamblers. They <laughs> kind of wave to each other, they motion to each other as they arrive or leave. Sometimes they lean between tables to kind of tell a joke, share a laugh, have a drink. Teddy Haas is pl present, who uh, Morna knows from her previous, uh, Doxley as well, who's been here before. But he isn't quite his Johnny on the spot self. The last couple times you came into the Lucky Heathen, he was the first one to kind of greet you through the door. But with this sort of less busy time of the day, you can see his posture is more relaxed, his body language a little more casual. He's sitting on one of the bar stools, looking out at the limited action on the floor. When he does sense your arrival, after you're a few steps in, however, he straightens up and you can see him. He's kind of smooths his floral vest and then he kind of comes towards you. He strides towards you with a wide grin and sort of open, welcoming arms. Good afternoon. Happy to see both new and returning faces. Uh, to the first timers, uh, my name is Teddy Haas and I am the Lucky Heathen's floor manager. Uh, are you here for the tables? Or have you come at the request of Mr. and Mrs. Montero? Mr. Mon and Mrs. Montero's request. Wonderful, I am glad to hear it. They will be pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, Mr. Mackland spoke with them this morning, and they're currently getting a report from Mr. Diamond and his son. Uh, but they said to uh, permit any additional flea bags to join them should they arrive. Um. Uh, a quick drink or, or spin of the wheel before you confer? Do you uh, have any snacks? This is not a, an eating establishment. Uh, not even like peanuts or like little crunchy things, people to munch on while they roll. While you're speaking with the Monteros, I'm happy to see if I can find something for you. Oh, that would be wonderful, Mr. Haas. Thank you. I, I didn't get your names. Kate. Kate. Ilian. Ilian, nice to meet you. And uh, Morna and Doxley from before. Uh, he sort of leans in. He's not trying to make himself like secretive, but he does lean towards you for a brief moment. Were you able to locate uh, Mr. Morton? In fact, I was not. Huh. I just lost a lot of gold in roulette, which has no cards. Mm. I won't speak out of my place, but uh, the Monteros might have something on that. Excellent. Thank you. Of course. Always happy to help. <laughs> no spins of the roulette before I take you up. Uh, some like to see how their fortunes lie for the day. Business first and pleasure later. Of course. Of course. Please, come with me. Thank you. And he starts to lead you. He takes you past a small kind of swinging wooden gate on the eastern end of the room, and it leads to a staircase that goes up to the second floor. The already reserved sounds of the main gambling area sort of fade further to the background, muffled. And you're faced with a long hallway, but even before you're told that you'll be heading into the first door on your left, you can hazard a decent guess. Because recounting your journey with enthusiasm is the voice of the young boy, Wes. Oh. And then the tall woman 
with the wavy hair. She was shouting, throw me my weapon. But the elven lady <laughs> didn't hear or, or didn't care or whatever, because she was like, whoopsh, whoopsh with her whip, and it was awesome. And you can hear him sort of going through the motions of the battle. <laughs> Teddy gets to the door and he pushes it open. He steps in first, sort of before the rest of you, to address two impressive specimens sitting side by side in a kind of high-backed, expertly upholstered leather bench. This office of sorts has been rearranged to make room for a very small kind of circular seating area, probably about eight chairs in total, but only a few are currently occupied. And upon seeing you, Wes hops out of his chair in excitement. That's them right there. I wager we don't make it to town without them. Um, most of the remaining flea bags are here, with the exception of uh, Mr. Claiborne and I believe Mr. Welker was, was the final one. And finally, you get a closer look at who you must assume are the Monteros. Two golden-scaled dragonborn, with more jewelry on their fingers than teeth in their mouths. The man has a flatter head and a longer snout, with a rather ostentatious long sleeve tunic, and he's drinking from a goblet that looks expensive in an antique kind of way. The woman is wearing a black robe made of a thin fabric and it has golden accents, and several bangles are looped over her horns, each of them jewel encrusted with different gemstones. And though they could use a bit of polish, they're in excellent condition for a frontier town like this. Without being told, you know right away that these two are old money. <laughs> and even the way they kind of curl their fingers to gesture you into the room has a bit of flair to it as they kind of motion to the seats in front of you. Bring them in, bring them in. Your enthusiasm is infectious, my boy, but we've heard this part of the story already and we like to speak with the others. Teddy, see to it that Mr. Diamond and his son are compensated for their time. And you see sort of Teddy nod his head and he motions kind of out the door a little bit. And the Mrs. Montero also speaks kind of as they're get, as the the, Monte, the diamonds sort of, Wes and his father are getting up out of their seats. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your stay in Broncolo and good luck in your search. And as Wes is kind of moving out to the door, he sort of leans in a little conspiratorial to the group here. Good to see you made it through your first day in Broncola. Isn't it great here? We're off to find my mom body like I said I would, but if you ever want to talk or you got a job for an entrepreneurial type like myself, we got a spot by the gnome tents up on the hill. Good day to all of you. And thanks again, Mr. and Mrs. Montero. And as he's saying that, you can see his dad is kind of like ushering him out <laughs> the door as this is all kind of happening. Please, have a seat. And how do you do? Well, thank you for having us, first off. Of course. I'm Liam. This is my wife, Chelsea. We're some of the old guard of Broncolo. Always nice to see new faces. How have you found the town thus far? Not too rough, Vile. No, I got a job pretty quick. Um, for, uh, I believe, a Mr. Bison. Um, and that was fine, getting some early work. Mm. People have been uh, making themselves available to us. It's been honestly pretty, pretty swell. That's good. Working for Bison on day one, not a bad way to make a start. I don't know what the repercussions of that even mean, but uh, I mean. Repercussions? Oh, no, I just mean, I just don't know the hierarchy or the importance of people in this town. I just. Found out later that it was Bison that gave us his job, and that's as uh, much as I know. Well, the most important people are right here in this room. I can tell. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does uh, you, sir, your name? Yes, uh, Ilian. Ilian. Does Ilian speak for all of you? Our stay has been quite pleasant so far. I'm glad to hear it. It's beautiful here. Yes. Beauty among one of Broncolo's finest qualities. You said you're a member of the Old Guard. Have you been here over a year? Uh, close to it. Us and Bison, Izzy, some of the very first people to pick this spot out. Uh, please, um, let's stay focused if we can. 
We heard quite a bit from the Diamonds about the Horton Boyd holdup, but we're more interested in what happened after that. Perhaps you could start with what you remember and we could ask a few clarifying questions. I imagine that Teddy imparted to you that we do have an interest in cleric activity in the cusp. Well, um, we were in the front wagon, and I do have things to say, but uh, you guys were, you were closer. There were balls of fire, and a very mean-looking man. Mm. He's riding horseback um, after Horton and his boys blew their whistles and retreated. We started making our way as quickly as possible to the line, and when, uh, or sorry, the cusp, and, uh, Saw the cleric on horseback, started to create fire out of his fist. Mm. They sort of look to each other at that. Is that uh, something that you are familiar with? Uh, one thing that we try to keep note of is the type of magic used. Something that we've been tracking is whether it's the same one or two clerics that appear in the cusp, or if it's different ones every time. So we try to estimate which one you ran into based on what kind of magic they were using. Well, having heard that, Doxy will try to describe as much of like the physical features. I don't know if I remember. The physical features of the, of of the cleric. Sure. Yeah, uh, you guys didn't get a great look at the cleric himself, but he was also talking about the magic they were oh, using. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said fire, fire magic. Uh, yes, nearly. Actually, he did take down a tree with one, and then I believe one of our associates was able to interrupt the second attempt with um, some kind of a explosive. Hmm. Andy, did he attack mostly from close up or from very far away? It looked like either worked for him. He was trying to close the gap very quickly before we could get closer to Broncolo within the cusp. Um, but it seemed like it seemed like he wanted to get to us. Um, also, I don't know if it's mentioned uh, if any previous clerical activity. Very adept at uh, horseback riding. Um, they didn't fly. No, no flying. They um, fly now? Some of them fly. Just horseback. Um, also, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there was a third wagon that was going to reach town, um, destroyed by the cleric as well. Yes, Mr. Macklin told us that. Um, did the cleric say anything as it got close to you? Did it shout from its horse? Anything? Not that I recall. Did anyone hear anything? A telepathic communication? Nothing for me. Nothing no, of. sir. No telep. You say it as though this cleric isn't a person walking among us. Um, we consider them to be something other than us. That's fair. In your research and experience, are these clerics usually after a particular thing or person, or do they patrol? One of my questions I was going to ask you, thank you for bringing me there, is whether it seemed like this cleric was targeting someone in particular. You said that he shot fire at your wagon. Which wagon did he shoot at first? The third wagon. But he continued to pursue after the third wagon fell. Yes. So safe to say the one he was looking for was not in the third wagon. Well, he didn't stop to investigate. You're telling me that they can just sense when they've vanquished their target? Yes. How do you know all of this? <laughs> the two of them kind of look, they laugh at each other. <laughs> A lifetime of research. Long before you came to Brunk Hollow? Well, people come to Brunk Hollow for all kinds of reasons, and for some, it is to get away from the clerics out there. So, uh, sorry, that just strikes me. Did you come to Brunk Hollow because you had some information that the cusp was already there and it would be a safe place? And if so, how did you know that? We did not know that ahead of time. We heard rumors from the prison. We have a few friends who work over at Fort Contrition. I see. 
And when we heard this was a place where maybe we, we can do our research without worrying for our lives, well, that seemed like an opportunity too good to pass up. Right. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Um, when the cleric stopped its chase eventually, what did it do next? Did it seem frustrated? Did it yell? Did it fire off one more bit of fire? Well, when it, it had another ball of light ready to go, it looked like I was afraid I was going to lose our second wagon as well. Mm. And it wasn't immediate, but there was a, a flickering of the magic seeming to seep out before it completely vanished. And then almost instantly he stopped his horse, turned it around, and that was the last he saw when we continued on. Died out gradually, not all at once. It wasn't like a, the fire got blown out. It was very gradual, a quick gradual. But yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me addressing a personal question to the group, was this the first cleric encounter for everyone here? Yes. Yeah. No. No. Okay. He watches Chelsea sort of marks that down, but doesn't ask any follow-up questions. Have you seen this fire magic in the cusp before? We have some guesses as to which one it might be. There are more than one cleric who use fire magic, but as I said, we go through a list of clues and try to see if we can determine which one it was. Question, when, during the first episode, was it like, was the spell more fiery or was it more like light? Like just more fiery. More fiery? Yep, oh, okay. definitely more fiery than light. Here's one for you. If you could stand face to face with that cleric right now, what would you say to him? Don't think. I don't think I would say anything. Don't think. Nothing. What would you say? Nothing. I'd drive my javelin up through his chin. Is anyone here friendly with Mr. Claiborne or Mr. Welker? We've done a job or two with Mr. Welker and... I'm supposed was, to see him tonight, actually. He was right behind us, but he was waylaid. Is he? We he have a little business to attend to. If he doesn't arrive in time, would you tell him to come by at some point? Yes, sir. Mr. Claiborne, not uh, someone you know as well. He doesn't speak common. Ah. He's very friendly, though. What does he speak? our wagon. Orcish. Ah. Perhaps we find someone that speaks Well, we assume. <laughs> <laughs> we assume he's he doesn't Orcish. speak elven or dwarvish. We tried all those. Ah. Perhaps we go to Maze, get a potion of comprehension. Maybe we have a discussion with him. <laughs> <laughs> Any other details you can remember? Were you frightened? Yes. Yes. May I ask you a question? Please. With all of this research that you've done, is there any chance that you're ever going to have the upper hand on these guys? That remains to be seen. Would you be interested in eliminating them? Or merely just studying them? I think one of our primary concerns is, while one may wish to eliminate one, would such a brazen act break the tenuous barrier that we have here in Broncolo? You think harming a cleric is somehow going to compromise what Broncolo is? What makes it special? As, as Doxley is saying this, Morna can barely contain herself. She's like shaking her head. Like, do I see that? <laughs> do I see that? Uh, I'm gonna say Doxley doesn't see that because you're okay. sort of looking at, oh yeah, Kate kind of sees that, but Doxley, you're looking at, you know, okay. Chelsea Montero. We believe that is a possibility at this point, yes. 
There are a lot of people in Broncalo afraid of what may or may not break that barrier. For now, the barrier stands. And forgive us, we're new and maybe not. We don't deserve this kind of confidential information, but does anybody in the town actually understand why Broncolo is the way that it is? No. Does that seem true? Make an insight check. Oh, can, can <laughs> we all make an insight check? <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Uh, sure. Natural 20. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Nine. Okay. 14. 14. Seven. <laughs> As Chelsea kind of looked to Liam and then kind of turns back, most of the attention goes back to Chelsea, who's the one talking to Doxley in that moment. But for whatever reason, Ilian's eyes kind of linger on, on Liam there, who is sort of sitting by her side. And you watch him just kind of stroke his chin a little bit and his eyes kind of flick around the room and there's just kind of a fidgety energy about him that to you just reads as, without sort of knowing exactly what it is, like maybe they don't know, but maybe they have some theories. Yeah. Like you, it, he seemed sort of very thoughtful about it, whereas she gave like a hard no. Mm -hmm. He kind of had a, just a little bit of, there's something else there, maybe someone they spoke to or something that they've posited in their research, but okay. there's something that they're not telling you about that possibility, which that, doesn't, that makes sense to you. That's, yeah. that's very sort of sensitive information. Um, before we continue, um, drinks? Yes. Takes out a few glasses, pours them around for everybody. You had said, was I afraid when the cleric was there? Yes. Well, that was certainly true. I would say I was more angry, but I felt like there was nothing I could do in that moment. Yes. <clears throat> Just hope that somehow changes in the future. Would you say folks here are religious? I would say that it is a mix. I think that the people who have been in Broncolo the longest are the people who had the most to lose on the outside. Otherwise, why come? Some of the flea bags that come to Broncolo now, maybe more so looking for opportunities, places to work, a thriving, growing community. Some of them, yes, religious or no problem with the gods at least. But I think the people who came here at the very beginning, they came for a reason. Cheers. 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 What it would have been like to be here at the beginning. Uh, it had its moments. <laughs> I'd love to hear about them sometime if you don't mind. There was plenty of land to go around, but you had to do everything yourself. I find that the comforts of certain members of the community have grown on me. As far as I can tell, there's no church. There is not. We think that if um, someone attempted the construction of a church, they would find that their pursuits were quickly waylaid. I understand. <laughs> Do you ever send out scouting parties? Trying to bait these folks out just to get a better look at them? Mm, bait the clerics, no. <laughs> I think you would find it difficult to pay someone enough money to perform such a task. Have you ever found that when someone has clearly crossed the line, if they leave, does the cleric's memory serve? There have been people who have left Broncalo that we never hear from again. How does Macklin do it? He seems to be coming to and fro quite often. Yes, there are couriers and people who travel. We must assume that Mr. Macklin has not gone through the gate, as it said. Perhaps he has a checkered past, but not so much that the clerics are always looking for him. See. Wouldn't be a very good guide through the cusp otherwise. Right. 
You seem to have a question on your mind. Before I move on to something else, please. This line. Do you know anyone who's crossed it? You speak of the promulgation line. Yes. Again, I would draw your attention to the early settlers of Broncolo. And she gives like a little <laughs> presentational kind of. Uh, so you've crossed it? We came to Broncolo because um, we believed we were approaching it at the very least. Now you don't have to answer me, but as a student, I'm curious what line of practice y'all are in. <laughs> I believe you are one of the people who said that this was not your first experience with a cleric. Perhaps sometime you come back and have a private discussion. You tell us about that and we're happy to share. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see that Morna is freaking yeah. out? You saw it before, so I mean, like Morna is like, my and again, friend you can is just see incredibly rude. <laughs> you can see a little discomfort, sort of shifting in her seat. Sure, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna follow up on that later. <laughs> Put that in the yeah. hole. <laughs> Morna freaking out. She's gonna. Is there more booze to go around? <laughs> Morna just like holds up her glass. Like, yes, Jesus. of course. Without asking for your criminal. Um, <laughs> resume. Yeah. Can I ask where you were before you came to Broncolo? You can. I have no quarrel telling you this. We are originally from. Oh, I will tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I from. A place that I will tell you very soon. That's <laughs> yeah. written somewhere. In a manner befitting. There we go. In my station. <laughs> <laughs> we both hail from Vancor. We had a very uh, lucrative four-story bathhouse in the most oh. affluent part of the city. Have you reconstructed one here? It's on the to-do list. Oh, I will be the first <laughs> to enjoy it. As soon as we get the impression that that is something that the citizens of Broncolo could afford as a whole, we will look into it. I look forward to it. I'm sure the citizens of Brunk Hollow as a whole could afford to take a bath. Are you calling us dirty? <laughs> I apologize for <laughs> Morna is literally like I apologize for my friend. She occasionally speaks without thinking. I have found in my brief time knowing her, and I would wish she would be more polite with folks we do not know. I thought it was a little funny. It's fine. I also thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was good. Bath jokes. Are there any other questions before we move on to other business? This talk has been wonderful, very helpful. We greatly appreciate you sitting down with us. The boy Wes has sung your praises several times over made quite an impression. We've gotten the impression, as did he, that you are capable hands. Take the bull by the horns types. May I be so bold as to make a proposition to enlist your services? We'd love to hear it. Um, Liam, we said we'd take it to the Merc Hall. I know, I know, but these are real fighters we have here. Cut out the middleman, go straight to the source. Everybody give me insight checks. Oof! Come on. Hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nat 20, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Four. 11. Natural one. Hey, let's not go. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay. Let us stay. <laughs> After sort of being rebuffed by Chelsea there after you sort of attempt to defuse the joke situation. You sort of sit quiet, you sort of reserve yourself, <laughs> kind of sit quietly and let them speak their piece. And as they continue to speak, just as everyone else is kind of listening intently as to what the job might be, you have a kind of 
kind of backseat view. You just kind of take in everybody sort of sitting here in the circle. And you get the slightest impression that that last exchange, the sort of, you know, we said we'd take it to the Merc Hall, no, no, that there's a little theater to it. Yeah. That the, oh, cool. that the intent all along was to ask you, but that they want you to think that you're all like <laughs> getting in on this secret. Oh. So that's the kind of, uh, just, you get okay. that Why notion. More to know more than everyone about everything. <laughs> Seriously. She's quiet. She's quiet, she listens. I'm quiet, I'm so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so quiet he speaks and not his own scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Damn. A few months ago, Chelsea and I commissioned a tavern to be built. Just a little ways to the southeast of Broncolo. It's a beautiful spot. Good proximity to the river, other resources. Not on land owned by the prison. Flat and fertile, good for crops. We thought for sure that as Broncolo got bigger, this would be the next area to be cultivated, and we wanted to have our foot in the door first. What we didn't realize until later is that the area is a bit prone to flooding after a bad rainstorm. Mm. <laughs> Holds water very tight, and the whole lowland gets bogged out for several days, sometimes even weeks if it's down hard enough. Definitely not going to be the next extension of Broncolo, mm. that's for sure. Anyway, it's not in good shape, but the beginnings of a tavern are still there. We had part of it built. Recently, we learned that some goblins have taken up residence in this piece of tavern that we've built. Now, we acknowledge that there is some loose alliance taking place here, but we can't have our property become a goblin refuge. That reflects poorly on us as reputable business partners. And if they establish some kind of base of operation close to town, we don't want to be held responsible for that either. We would like someone to drive them out. You don't have to kill them, whatever way you see fit. If you can get them to leave and then burn down the remains of the tavern, that works for us. But we would like to make sure that when people say, who built that tavern that the goblins are staying in, that no one can say the Monteros. This morning we uh, hired one of our regulars who has some scouting expertise to survey the extent of their occupancy but he has yet to return. We would like some people to go out more than one this time so that if something strikes and there's a problem, they have help. Perhaps drive the goblins out and find our scout if he's still there and then come back to town. And just as the wheels are turning on this job, um, any chance you'd sell the property? Let the new owners deal with the goblins as they see fit? You want to buy a flooded tavern south of Broncolo? I'm open to options. We are sea elves after all. We like the water. True. You drive the goblins out. We'll talk. Understood. I take it you're not a fan of the deal that was made between certain leaders, as far as I understand it, and um, Mr. Honk? I wouldn't say that we're not a fan. We understand that it brings business to Broncolo. I'm sure that you've seen one or two goblins downstairs on the gaming floor. We allow them inside. We'll see how Broncolo continues to develop. If the goblins prove that they can live among us as civilized folk, maybe our minds change. But for now, the goblins still have a poor reputation, and we have no interest in being identified as the first people who let the goblins have a foothold that they should not have had. Any idea what exactly they could check off of a list of acceptable citizenship behavior? I would say living here for a few years without incident. A few years? It's longer than this town's Miss, been together. Yes, well. Thank you. Uh, I'll do it. And my friends will, too. 
Don't, don't get too quiet. <laughs> uh, and, and my friends will too. Uh, oh, she's sort of they like they the look to each other and then look to the people who haven't spoken. We'll see what we can do. That would be excellent. Um, what compensation suits you best? Gold? Reputation? Introductions? Items less easily found this far from civilization? Is it okay with you if I scout out the job first and reply to that later? See how much it would take. I suppose. <laughs> I have mild concerns that the scout that we sent this morning could be in danger given the fact that he is yet to return. I would simply urge you to not take too long. Who is the scout? His name is Mr. Morton, and he is a frequent guest here at the Lucky Heathen. Okay. Um. I'll take my payment and an introduction. Would you like to tell us now with whom? No. <laughs> Very well. Anyone else? Reputation always works for me. Reputation with someone in particular? I'll think on that, but for now, no. Done. What's y'all's relationship like with Miss Crittenden? They sort of, they look to each other. <laughs> Chelsea kind of raises a scaled eyebrow. We've had business with Miss Crittenden before. I'm not sure I could get you a job with her if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> no, I, I assumed as much. I'll take gold. Gold it is. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Yes, um, we have. Uh, she really sort of pushes out of her chair and goes over to a kind of a desk on the wall, sort of up against the far wall underneath the window. And she takes out... <gasps> notes? Secret notes? There are a couple landmarks to look out for on your way here. Take Detention Pass, you'll see a couple of very tall stones, and that's when you should turn south. Then there's a small lake where herons are seen very frequently, day and night, and then you will start to see these sort of lowlands, and you will see the tavern. It's all game. I'm assuming you said that this was rather time sensitive, yeah. Well, the tavern less so, but as I said, we did enlist Mr. Morton and I would like to know whether or not he's in trouble. When they said, when they said Morton, do mm -hmm. I get anything from the turns? Uh, give me an insight check. It's, oh, that's it's not his last name, isn't it? God. <laughs> For what? Nothing. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I guess that counts. Um, <laughs> 12? No, not really. Darn. Nothing in particular. When was he uh, sent out for this? As I said this morning. Um, a couple hours? I would say 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, somewhere in there. We'll head out shortly. The tavern itself is probably less than an hour to get there. We didn't want it to be too far from Broncolo proper. I wanted it to be an easy trip back and forth. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Is there anything else that you need from me um, before we get going on this job for you? From you in particular? Yes, I'm wondering if I can excuse myself to go get ready to go. Uh, you may. Uh, yes, you may. I, I have no further questions. Thank you. We will all go. <laughs> Um, it's wonderful to meet you. Uh, <laughs> he takes the bottle, pours another round of drinks. Um, Give me that. Thank you. Uh, at this point, Morna is like, where were these people raised? That is what's going through her head. She's like, what the actual fuck is happening? <laughs> no manners. Um, safe travels. Oh, that's, this uh, is yours. Drippity so. drops. Sorry. Cheers. Cheers. I excuse myself out of the room. I hope to see you again soon. And as you guys are exiting, and just before you close the door, we'll say you gotta kind of go out in this order. Yeah, just can as I be case. Last? Oh, you can be. Oh, last. sorry. Yeah, if you purposely waited. Yeah, yes. I, I want to just take. My, I'm gonna drag my feet a little bit. Okay, oh you can do so. 
Oh, was there something you wished to do yeah. as you were getting to the end? Um, like, pile out one at a time. Pretty Billy within earshot still, or are they? Are you waiting for them to go down the stairs? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Sure, you start to hear some footsteps. Just as they start to get to the threshold of the stairs, uh, Liam actually stands up. Wait, and everybody kind of stops and turns. Uh, one last thing. If the basement of the tavern is still intact, please refrain from going down there. Good luck. Down Thank you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, well. <coughs> and now people start to go out, coop, coop down the stairs. So Doxley, rip right. Is it fair to say that I could clock Doxley strategizing <laughs> something? <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, you were, we'll say you went first because you were sort of in a hurry to get out, and you can hear the footsteps behind you, and you can hear that there's not three sets of footsteps behind you, and you sort of look over your shoulder, and you can see that Doxley's not there. Do we all hear that, or just Doxley? Do you hear what? To hear the oh, he shouted that to everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was Great. you guys were just outside the door. And he shouted <laughs> that in the hallway. And Doc's is like, everybody go down there now. <laughs> they seem like they were about to kind of co like sort of converse and sort of go over their notes a little bit, and they see you lingering at the door. Yeah, she'll like almost like hang her or her hand like on the door frame and lean back into the room. Um, it's been a while since I've seen Niall. He can take on a group of goblins all on his own. The objective with Mr. Morton was not to engage the goblins, but to simply give us a report of how many there were. Yes, well, I'm thinking a little pessimistically. If you say he's late, that doesn't sound like him. I have my doubts that Mr. Morton would have been able to take on the number of goblins we believe to be there. Doxy will give a quick nod and then head out. Let's go downstairs. Back to the main area of uh, of the Lucky Heathen. And you see um, Teddy, who's sort of, again, kind of down there, and he doesn't come up to kind of engage you, but you see him sort of give a sort of polite nod just on your way kind of down. I'm gonna sort of walk, we're still kind of in, in order, right? I'm gonna yeah, like Morna. walk past um, <laughs> uh, Ilian and Morna, and as I walk past Ilian, I'm gonna kind of bump him in the shoulder and be like, I have to get in that basement and then just walk straight out the door. Clearly upset. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna uh, keep him out. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <More. laughs> <laughs> as I get out, I'm gonna start pacing and like waiting for them all. Uh, in the third yeah. As I, I'm just gonna sort of try to get next to Ilian and say, was there a row this morning that I missed? I'm not familiar with what that word means, row? Oh, a uh, fight amongst oh. the peers. This um, group of... They're, the tensions are high, and folks are I, rude. I saw Mr. Welker and Kate very shortly before we ran into you, so I I haven't had a fight with anyone around. All right. They were giving me grief about your face. I think <laughs> it is a normal face. And she's going to go out and see Kate. Pacing um, quickly back and forth. I do yes. want a yep. particular guy. Do I see it has... Rufus and Wes, have they stuck around at all? Do I see them in the thoroughfare? Like, uh, no, uh, you don't. I mean, Wes on his way out said they were staying yeah. up near the gnome tents, but they don't seem to have stayed okay. here. Um, okay. Yeah. Hang outside with these two. <laughs> as soon as I see Morna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop and like walk right up to her and be like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? No. Ms. Mori, do you not, the promulgation line, these people could have done anything. Rape and murder, villainy of all kinds. Wh which line are you approaching, miss? Which, where were you raised, ma'am? Do you know where you are right now? Yes, in Brunk Hollow, a town full of scoundrels and reprobates. Every second that passes, I am more and more fascinated by what exactly brought you to this town full of rapists and murderers. If you so clearly do not identify as one yourself and look down upon people who tow such a line. I'm s I, Kate, I don't wish to fight with you. I have no quarrel. My only question is, what line of questioning the people in town who can make the introductions, clearly wealth beyond measure, do you to, to ask what crimes could, could bring them here? I came here for my own reasons, and I don't think you have to worry too hard about how my reputation interacts with yours. We've only been here less than two days. Do you not wish to associate with me? 
I am happy to be in your presence, but it seems that some of my questions are rather pissing you off, and I am very curious. Again, what has brought you here? If you are so scared of crossing lines and pushing boundaries. I come to seek my fortune like many. So you're one of the religious types, like they mentioned? The more recent comers? What? One's what? less concerned about breaking rules and more interested in money. What would it be if I am? Well, see, maybe I'm a little bit scared that people who contact the gods while they're here in Brunkalo are gonna shatter whatever illusion is going on here. Perhaps we have different views on things. Do you want to break this up or should I? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Having different views, sometimes it can teach one another about important things. Well said, Mr. Tyrell. There it is, Zell. I'm gonna come along towards these soggy lowlands, um, <clears throat> but I have no interest in hurting a bunch of goblins who are just squatting in a place that is of no use to anybody. Neither do I, Kate. All right, well, okay, <laughs> um, that's great, but you did just accept a contract for literally doing that, and I'm not saying I'm eager to inflict harm against these people, but... I think that there's a way to do this without harming them. Exactly. And allowing some kind of agreement or making sure that I would first personally take on anything to make sure that they were comfortable in the future if it came to that. I have no desire to harm the goblins as well. Surely we can reach him reasonable agreement with them. Great, well we can brainstorm as we walk because like I said, this scout of theirs is missing and not coming back, so. Yeah. Where did TC go? He ran back as if he had to relieve himself. He had, he had to. <laughs> he had to dump a big fat one as far as I know. Should we? And with that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pivot over to uh, Good as Gold. Oh my god. TC having returned from the outskirts of Brunkalo after <laughs> traveling through a sort of narrow, possibly escape sort of passage or tunnel, a secret kind of tunnel. You get to the door and it's nice to be greeted with some friendly faces. Mm. Their faces kind of light up when you walk through the door. Ah, oh, Mr. Welker, good to see you again. <laughs> Afternoon. Um, I'll say that as before I come in here, uh, I'm going to use a, a healing surge. Okay. To, and just try to center myself and try to not. Cause it, the poison condition doesn't give off any physical um, clues. It does not. Does no, it? You um, the uh, the sort of gas that sprayed in. I, I mentioned it like it irritated your eyes and yeah. your nose. So you you might have some looks of like. Uh, distress on your face, but it's not like some, someone's not like, oh my God, that guy's yeah, poison. poison. You just like, your eyes are a little red and your yeah. nose is a little runny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll take my, as I'm stepping in there, <laughs> sure. I'm like uh, fixing myself up and I'll, again, do a healing search real quick. I get allergies as well, Mr. Wells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I'm gonna get 11 back. That's green. Oh, Ooh, oh that's, a, that's a spicy good healing point. Surge. 20. <laughs> got it. Uh, <laughs> cool. And uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, did the bolts that we sold you the other day, did they hold up well? Oh, why? Have you had occasion to use them? Oh, um, just in practice, but yes. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, what can I get for you today, sir? Um, uh, I am feeling a, a bit under the weather, as you uh, uh, so rightfully pointed out. Um, I might not be able to get everything today, but perhaps it's some kind of a, uh, an antidote, a uh, uh, mix of... Uh, Antidotes. <laughs> we have antidotes, yes. Um, they're usually particular to the type of poison. So if you know what is afflicting you, we can get you something. That, um, oh, the yellow mold spore. Um, a bit of spelunking, perhaps? <laughs> I, you know me, I, I get up to it. <laughs> we do have yellow mold antidote. Uh, yes, we do, we have a variety. Um, that will cost you, do you just want the one vial or are you planning on spelunking a little later <laughs> perhaps? I might find myself spelunking again. Let's see, how much would one? It's 15 gold for yellow mode. 15, then I, I may take two please. Yes, yes, of course. He gets the two bottles. 15 you said? 15, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 15. 
as a thirty we, gold. One. We do also have antitoxins, which uh, it's a preemptive measure if you know you're going to be exposed to yellow mold. Now those are similarly priced. Uh, those are 30, because it, they are, unlike the yellow mold antidote, it covers all poisons, or most poisons. All right, um, let's take one of those as well, of course, yeah, please. If I was spelunking, I would take one with me. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an antitoxin. Yes. And then a yellow spell mold antidote. Lovely. Thank you. Of course. Uh, I'll hand over the 60 gold. Mm -hmm. um, Anything yes. else that we can get for um, you, sir? Not for today. Uh, I mean, how late are you open? Uh, we're usually open till about 7 p.m. Sometimes you can find me or my brother here. The doors may be closed, but if it's an emergency, you can knock. We won't necessarily answer, <laughs> but we might. Uh, I see. Um, how much would a, a shovel put me back? A shovel's inexpensive. And... Oh, right. <laughs> Just uh, one and a half gold. <laughs> one gold, five silver. I'll take seven. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, may I pay for one up front? Uh, and... You have to pay up front. We don't give it to you for free. <laughs> Too true. <laughs> <laughs> Business sense savvy. Um, can I pay you now and perhaps collect it later? You wish to get your money back, or you want the shovel later? Shovel later. Yes, that we can do. Okay. I thought you meant to get your money back after you pay us, which no. would defeat the purpose of the sale. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, when are you planning on picking up your shovel? Hopefully before seven. Yes. <laughs> that is the plan. If it's before seven, you can walk in and get it. We'll set it aside in the corner. We'll put a piece of paper on it that says Mr. Welker. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. Maybe don't. <laughs> we'll put a piece of paper on it that says shovel. <laughs> <laughs> even, even better. Um, thank you. <laughs> Is there an estimate of when you might come? If you're planning on coming later, I can try and be here. Sundown's around seven o'clock around here. Thereabouts. But like I said, if I know that you're going to pick it up, I can be here to get it for you. I'll try to be here just just before seven, and if Great. not, I'll try another time. That works perfectly. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, so sixty-one and a half gold. Great. Uh, hand that over. It's great. Okay, it's good shit. Um, and yeah, collect myself. And... Are you taking the one yellow mold antidote? Not in okay. front of him. Sure. Yeah, I'll wait until I get outside. Um, and <coughs> head out. Great. Have a good day, Mr. Welker. You as well. You head back out into the thoroughfare. Where are you headed? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not in the front step. Maybe not. Maybe in a, in a little. I mean, it's pretty inconspicuous. It's okay, like a little glass a little vial, glass vial. And, yeah. Yeah, and I guess I won't go very far in case it's not the right antidote or some bullshit like that. <laughs> you immediately feel the oh, effect of poison <laughs> leaving your system. <laughs> That's some kind of special freaking DK. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, great. Uh, I will head now, uh, forgive me, so I went down to uh, Good as Gold, which I believe is there, so mm -hmm. I will loop back. I'll head back towards the Lucky Heathen, like I said. I, okay. I was, I'm gonna say that uh, by the time you're coming back around that way, you see them in the thoroughfare, and you get the impression, your first thought as you see them in the thoroughfare is, they didn't even go in yet at this point, yeah. like, because that's where you left them, but mm -hmm. you do see them kind of, just sort of, moving back and forth in a way that it doesn't seem like they're sort of about to head in, so you see them about this time. Um, I I need to go prepare uh, for this quick journey. Uh, Doxley, if you just come with me to the Paramount so that I can get stuff together. Um, and then we can meet in a handful of minutes. I don't know how long you guys need before you need to head out. I will wait in the lobby of the Paramount. Okay. All right, Lillian, let's go. I'll help you get your armor on. Okay. TC, you're walking up at just about this point where, as they're about to split off from the party. Oh, uh, I, uh, am I too Walker? late? Did I miss the meeting? Yes, are you all right? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, they asked you to come back another time. Ah, they yes. They gave the rest of us a task. Ah. Uh, what sort of task? 
She's gonna say, sort of, <laughs> well, not not to be overheard on the street, it's, but it's uh, busy in the thoroughfare right yeah. now. It's loud. They bought some property that uh, is being overrun with goblins. It, <laughs> it is not particularly desirable land, a bog, um, oh. Oh. but they still don't wish to have the goblins squatting. We are tasked with asking the goblins to leave and then burning the place down. Asking the goblins to leave? Well, I guess we're just removing the goblins, but I think the hmm. first tactic was going to be to ask the goblins politely. And this is their first attempt? The, uh, they sent a scout uh, who has not shown back up, so they are concerned about him. Huh. I believe there would be gold or a nice introduction if you wished to ah, have it. I see. This is something that you're all headed out to do to its sweet. It is time sensitive, yes. All right. Um, they worry for the welfare of Mr. Moore. I see. Uh, all right. The scout. Did, did they give an idea of how much gold this might be worth? Uh, they are covered in gold, so I uh. imagine it is. <laughs> So maybe a bit of my own bartering. Then. Perhaps they did seem to have a bit of. Um, they said they were taking it to the Merc Hall, and I do not believe that they were. Huh. I think their intention was always to have the flea bags take care of it. Mm. Disposable, <laughs> I suppose we are. All right. Um, well, uh, uh, yes, I. Uh, we're getting you ourselves to together to go. Um, to no, no, I. I uh, Nor I, but I will wait in the lobby. All right. Um, I still haven't had. Did you get any of that free food? No. <laughs> you never asked about the free food, Miss Moray. Well, maybe I have more tact than you think I do. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Seem to have. Stumbled back into something. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe it's Lorna's paramount. gonna. Ma, Lorna is just gonna <laughs> take that and. Uh, uh, perhaps, um, at the Paramount. At the Paramount. Yes. I would like to have a nosh before I head oh, back out into the wilderness here. You look a little sweaty, Mr. Welker. I, I, I am, I am. I, I, something came over me and I, I just had to... Food poisoning? <clears throat> well, no, I haven't eaten, as I said. <laughs> so what was no. it? Oh, my God. Do I have to share every gastrointestinal... Uh, uh, <laughs> A blip on my on my daily journey with you. Have a little acid reflux. Something like that, yes. But I've, I've settled my stomach now. Thank you. Happy to hear it. Good. <sighs> Fucking yikes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys? You've headed off. You sort of. Yeah. Okay. You tipped your hat to maybe CC on the way, but mm. headed back to. So. <laughs> yeah, um. All right, yeah, perhaps a bite before we take off here again. Very well. Everyone kind of headed back to Paramount. Mm -hmm. You guys are back out in the thoroughfare and you kind of get enveloped once again by the midday bustle here. To your left, outside of uh, Lucky Heathen, the open market is as active as ever. And there's a line leaking out the front entrance of the Main Street Chop House as well for those grabbing a bite to mm -hmm. eat before returning to their daily obligations. Off to your right, there's a pair of wagons that look like they're being loaded up outside of Narvos C&C. &C. Messages and parcels about to make the journey to the world beyond the cusp. You don't envy the job of the couriers making that trip with regularity. Even if you had no quarrel with the gods, there are beasts and bandits and hazardous terrain to contend with. It's not as bright as it was yesterday, for clouds have come together to form an overcast sky, possibly a sign of incoming inclement weather. But for now, just a means of the downturn in temperature. Many of the people that pass you by have responded by adding an extra layer or protective clothing or protecting their extremities with scarves and gloves. You get back to the lobby of Paramount Lodgings. Uh, Doxley and Ilian are the first ones to get there. Hello there, good to see you again. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Just passing through. Afternoon, how do you do? Is this Mr. Clemens? This is Mr. Clemens. Um, I'm heading straight up to our room. Yeah. Um, and fidgety. <laughs> uh, once we get Toxley's into the room. <laughs> dragging her heels <laughs> yeah. on the stairs seeing it. Um, and once we get into the room, um, I want to get, just pace halfway into the room and turn around and look at you and say, Doc, I know this probably isn't the time. Um, but with seeing Niall and his stance with the Goryeonan and what you said this morning, I had a lot of time to think and I just need to know where you stand. I need to know 
in clear writing where you stand. In regards to being here. You said you weren't here for Marilyn Macklin and you weren't here for the Goryeo Nan. So what does that mean, Doxley? I just need to know, just need to know. Doxley so will start coming in and like changing into her traveling clothes sure. and stuff again, yeah. getting ready to go. Elian, it didn't really strike me until this morning when Izzy clearly knew who we were and where we were from. And she looked at me in a very particular way. And I want you to leave this building and as we go southeast, count the number of people whose eyes meet yours and then immediately look to the ground and count the number of mothers who slowly put their hand around their kid's shoulder and pull them a little closer when we pass. I want you to count it and feel it. I'm, I'm very aware, Doc, of what, how we were treated in Paran. And I don't want that to follow us here. So, are you looking to leave the family and strike out on your own? I'm here for me, Elian. And only Niall knows that, and now you do. And believe me when I say I was sad to have to make this trip alone and the sudden surprise that you were coming. I don't really follow blessings, but my friend, that was as close to one as I can think of. So, again, I know it's big news, but I'm very happy you're here. Doxley. Yeah. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I want you to know that's all I wanted to hear. I'm sick of this family business. I'm so sick of it. And I was going to leave it. As soon as we finished this job, I was done. Whether you were going to stick with it or not, I had no idea. I had hoped that the signs were pointing toward that you were leaving. But to hear you say it, actually, it actually I feel, oh, I thought I was going to have an ulcer by the morning, Doxley. I was so stressed. And I had a lot of time to think this morning, hadn't. I think, I mean, it's gonna have a lot of repercussions, but if <laughs> I have you and you have me, I think we can get through anything. And I think this is very exciting. And I I just, now that we don't have, I'm, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not doing anything for the Goryeo I've decided. Nothing anymore. And I don't know what I'm doing in Brock Hollow. <laughs> I, we have to talk about things, but um, I think it's exciting to, I just, I think I can help people and I think that's all I want to do is just help people and just go ask people about their days and just see them smile and, and I think I have to go apologize to TC and to Kate. I don't have to talk to Mora as much, but I want to, <laughs> I want to come clean about how I was planning and scheming around them, and I want to just leave it all behind. Doxley will <laughs> smile, walk over to your fucking armor that's sitting on the floor. She'll pick it up with her finger. Why don't we start with helping our boy Niall first? Yes, um, that's what I was worried about with his stance on the family, but now I'm so excited to see Niall. <laughs> I'm so excited. I hope he's okay. I, we should leave, actually. Yeah, let me get this armor off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I start Begin buckling it. To don the armor. We'll pivot briefly down to the lobby of uh, Paramount Logics. Again, as you enter, you see <laughs> Mr. Clemens. Or, Good day to you. Welcome back. Good day, Mr. Clemens. Okay. Have you found the day thus far? <sighs> Getting a little overcast, but still a lovely day. So hopefully the weather holds out. Yes. Truly. Indeed. Uh, is there a luncheon on? The kitchen is open. Some people do prefer the chop house across the street. That's what everybody keeps saying. Ah, at this lines. Here. At this time of day, the chop house is rather popular. Very well. Okay. Uh, we'll go and find that, Speak. that guy. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Were you going to say something? Yes. I'm just going to head out. <laughs> We're like kind of right on the river, right? Um, oh, the, no. yeah, right Paramount's not quite on the river. Okay, yeah. never mind. Are there like trees back behind the building, sort of? There are, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just like kind of take a step out of the lobby okay. and go to some trees behind the building. Not hungry? 
Um, <laughs> no, I'll be back in a minute. All right. Um, I'm just gonna head around the building and like find the tallest tree I can find. Sure, there and, are like, a few. I'm gonna say, let me look at the map here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> As you're looking in the vicinity, basically, if you see that, uh, if you see that number seven on the right side of the page, mm -hmm. basically that's heading towards Detention Pass, um, and the trees there sort of haven't been kind of logged and cut down. So there's a few large trees kind of over there. But this is Paramount. Yeah. Here, so not like right. Not yet. Yeah. Side. Yeah. There isn't one right near. I mean, the trees have been cut down, or like in the immediate vicinity. So you need to wander a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna like take a seat in where it's quiet, kind of there in that okay. like backyard field. Sure. You and just that. once again, like go into my not sleepy meditation, <laughs> but my my monk meditation yep. mode, <laughs> while I wait for everybody to get ready to go. You have to tell your body that you're like, don't fall asleep. <laughs> don't fall asleep. Focus. <laughs> don't you snooze. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah. So you went like background. Yeah, like the, the back. back sure. Area. As you As get around town. the back there, yeah, you see <laughs> goblins coming to and from along that. You can look down that long alley and you can yeah. see the tents there sort of in the distance. So mm -hmm. you do see goblins. There's very few people that aren't goblins moving back and forth behind this kind of back alley here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are, what are they up to? Just like normal, like thoroughfare type activity? Uh, give me a, an investigation check and. <laughs> 15. 15. Most of them are kind of coming to and from with either tools or implements of trade. You see axes, pickaxes, like different things. You do pick up on just before you kind of sit to kind of center yourself and meditate. You see one goblin that seems a little furtive, sort of look, holding something very close to their chest and sort of... <laughs> oh my god. And working their way kind of through the alley, and you're not exactly sure what they're holding. But. Anything that I would remember about the way that that goblin looks in the future? Uh, you could, you could do. He has um, a lot of goblins have kind of a sharp upper row of teeth that they kind of bear at people, and this one, as it's passing another goblin, it gives kind of a a little sort of bearing of the teeth, and it looks like one of its canines is kind of chipped. So you might notice that again in the future. And in addition to that, they have uh, their left ear has two earrings, so it's pierced twice. On the oh, ear. cool! Chip dip, very cool. Oh, chip, <laughs> chip, chip drip, chip drip, chip drip. <laughs> chip drip. Chip drip. <laughs> okay, and as I'm like kind of settling in to just take like just like three five minutes to myself, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna like quietly be like, it is different here. You came here for a reason. And a few sticks in the mud cannot take that away from you. <laughs> take a moment to yourself. Mm -hmm. behind the, <laughs> the two of you find a seat in the sort of small dining area there. Um, it looks like the um, the menu for today is beef strips mm. fried in butter. <laughs> Butter fried beef strips. Jesus. <laughs> to know <laughs> 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 that <laughs> <laughs> There's that gas for it. Gerd. Um. <laughs> so you two are the only ones sitting there for a moment. Yeah, Morna doesn't have much of an appetite, so okay. she's just gonna sort of keep TC <laughs> oh, company. Do you mind? <laughs> 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 Not at all, Mr. Well. <laughs> 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 oh, <cute>. More butter. <laughs> the butter's getting a bit cold. He's at one point. He's going, Are you sure? And like a drippy. Thank piece. you. No, <laughs> he brings over the butter, and you're like, Oh no, not for the beef. <laughs> Mm. Oh, mm. I get the beef sweats over here. Just <laughs> about it. Um, uh, so as they're sitting there, she's gonna be like, "I perhaps I was." <laughs> How does one have a conversation with him? <laughs> More is like never. <laughs> you know what? Uh, never. You know what? It wasn't matter. that important. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, Something on your mind. I just my. I. I did not mean to come off as critical of Ms. Mori. I find she is quite, not coarse, but blunt. Yes, it uh, doesn't seem to bother her to point things out quite bluntly, yes. We, 
And she implied she did not wish to be associated, which is fine. Oh, I missed something. But we are already, <laughs> well, uh, perhaps we have a different understanding of going through the gate. Oof. I know she is interested in alchemy. She has said as much. There are plenty of folks on the other side who learn to make perfectly respectable antitoxins and, and potions of the kind. But there are plenty of folks who come here to avoid being punished for crimes, violent ones. I imagine Am I that's incorrect true. in that? I can only imagine the things that people are trying to hide from here. You found it rude for her to inquire. I found it dangerous. Dangerous. I only meant it as a warning to her, and I know I've given her offense. Mm. Eh. Don't <laughs> worry too long about that. She is quite rude to you as well, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At just first let those I things was, roll off, honestly. I, first I, I thought it was a jest, but now I think that she is rude. <laughs> bothers me not in the least I've well, spent that is plenty of time you. with a with a heel either above me or just having hit me across the face <laughs> oh best to just let those things roll off <sighs> yes well I, I... sorry to hear that you're it seems like you're Hope you'd not walk through the streets here with fear. No, I of, you, of of the people around you and of asking the wrong question. Are you not afraid of that? You do not seem, sir, and I don't wish to be rude. So open to me either. <clears throat> there are certainly things that scare me. There are things that are worthy of fear. Even if we find ourselves thrust towards them, whether we like it or not, I suppose. Yes. <clears throat> Just watching him move his butter around. <laughs> <her plate. laughs> you start to hear the door open, and um, it sounds like Ilian and Doxley are about to join you. Also, Kate, uh, you meditating for a while and then returning to Paramount? Was that the Yeah, idea? I'll just kind of walk back around hey. and wait for everybody at the. <clears throat> As you're coming back around to the front entrance of Paramount Lodgings, you do notice that there's a small crowd gathered by like kind of a building just a couple down further off to the east, so toward Detention Pass. Mm. And rather than the sort of usual congregations you've seen, you know, around a game of craps or maybe a broken wagon wheel or a bottle of whiskey being passed around, it looks like there's someone lying in the back of a small hand-drawn wagon. And there's someone who's also kind of drenched in sweat that looks like they've been maybe pulling this wagon. Oh no. And another man is hunched over the person who's lying in the back of the wagon. His right hand is smaller than his left and he has long white hair, mutton chops that frame his face. It's Dr. Blaylock, you recognize him because you've been to the apothecary before. And he seems to be examining the person in the cart. You see him kind of looking around. At one point he sort of lifts maybe an arm or a finger or something. And he's maybe taking note of some of the injuries, of which there are many. There's gashes and cuts and bruises can be spotted all along their arms, their neck, and their head. The damage is so extensive that even identifying the person might be a challenge. And as you just take a couple steps closer, you sort of listen and try and pick up on some conversation. Give me a perception. Oh, come on, come on, lady. Do it. Oh. So I don't even, it hit and then it, I don't know. Don't know. I, didn't, I couldn't tell which one was which. I have two matching ones. Oh. <laughs> 25. 25. You take a couple steps closer and you just try and pick up and there is some you can pick up because they're speaking at a sort of louder volume. After sort of examining the body a little bit, you see Blay uh, Dr. Blaylock kind of look to the person who was pulling the wagon. Who found him? Was it up at the dig? Yes, sir. All right. If you don't mind, I, I could use your help getting them to my place so I can take a closer look. Ain't nothing to see, Doc. I'm taking them to the graveyard, make sure she's buried proper. All right. 
won't be more than 30 minutes or so. I knew her well enough. She don't want to be poked and prodded like a damn piece of meat. She's dead. Nothing you can do about it. I let you have a glance, now I'm taking her to the graveyard. And the person begins to pull the cart, and you can see Doc sort of... How far away is he? I mean, 40 feet, 30, 40 feet. Can I go up to him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's just standing there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... Oh. Did you come by my place this morning? <laughs> Wait, did I? No. <laughs> you what had, was this morning? <laughs> you had mentioned that you might be coming back, uh, but I've been out and about, so I'm just, I'm apologizing in advance if I missed you. Oh, no worries. It's, uh, it's been a lot busier than I expected these first two days in town. We've been sure, sure. running around like chickens with their heads cut off, doing right. little jobs here and there. You don't have to explain nothing to me. I, I thought you might be coming by for a lesson. Yeah. Well, is everything all right here? As much as it can be. It, Someone came back from one of Bison's dig sites. It seemed they'd had an accident of sorts. Do you know what kind of accident? I'd like to take a closer look at the body, but they're taking it right to the cemetery. Do they do that a lot with bodies that come out of the dig sites harmed? What do you mean? Don't let you examine them? Well, I wouldn't say they notify me about all of them. I just happened to be walking through and I saw it, so I asked to take a look. Mm. If they're dead already, not much I can do about it, but I did want to at least do my due diligence. Yeah, see if they were maybe crushed or fell or something else. Yeah, usually injuries at the dig sites are falling into something or having something fall on you. Did they look particularly crushed? Yeah, it's possible, it's hard to tell. There were some injuries along the arm and one of the legs. If I had to guess at a cursory glance, it seemed like they might have dropped down into somewhere and then hit the ground. Or been pushed. <laughs> you have reason to believe that? No, I'm just real curious what goes on at these dig sites. You know, I've been up in the wheels and, and there's, you know, large animals and, and creatures and, and all kinds of digs and different folks and I don't know, I still don't know what happened at this mysterious meeting yesterday. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure I'll be stopping by soon uh, to chit chat more. Pick your brain. You're free to come by any time. Uh, before you let your imagination run wild, injuries happen in the mines. Uh, I did it a bit myself as a younger man, and not uncommon. Uh, I wouldn't assume anything nefarious until you got reason to believe otherwise. I appreciate that reassurance, Doc. Yeah. That being said, now that you said it, I'm gonna see if I can catch that wagon. You go on ahead. He sort of, and he has, you know, he's got a little bit of a hunch and injury, so he's kind of moving along kind of as quickly as possible. Thank you. And as you go back to the entrance of Paramount Lodging, that's where we're gonna take a little break. Oh! Um, Woo! Uh, well done on the puzzle. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't say well done, <laughs> you but did thank it. you. B plus. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Ooh, well, you got yeah, off on the yeah, right. Yeah, when you put that first one down, I was like, "Oh boy!" Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Thank God. Um, awesome. Does everybody Great. guess my feet? Do you know what my feet is now? There's there's a pretty solid theory in yeah. the uh, it's pretty, in the chat. It, yeah, it got pretty, pretty revealed. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. pretty sweet. Dungeon dumper. It's dungeon. Yay! Oh, dungeon dumper. Dumper. Resistance to any damage that's from a trap, yeah. like any kind of any trap. trap. Really oh, that's so cool. And it, an advantage on trying to find like hidden, hidden stuff, compartments or, or traps and stuff. I feel like for this yeah. campaign, that's gonna be so I know. He <laughs> <laughs> does go spelunking. Like, that's why I picked you go spelunking. <laughs> you go spelunking. <laughs> um, awesome, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we'll be right back after a short break with yes. puzzles and games and yes. lotteries. Um, and... For, for, there's a lot of folks in TikTok, so hello and welcome. But uh, so on TikTok, we just sign off for about 15 minutes while we take a quick break. Yeah. Um, we do stupid puzzles on Twitch if you want to go there and just watch the They're puzzles. very cool puzzles. They're fun. <laughs> I'm out, you want to be out there trying to do them as well, so. Yeah, um, but then we'll be back on TikTok and you'll get a notification and stuff when we come back live for that. Yep. Um, and then we'll thank subscribers and people uh, after, after the break. Yeah, we'll thank people when we get back. Plenty more to come. See you on the other side, everybody. All right. Peace. Bye. Bye. Oh, Absolutely. is there a goblin red light district where? Like... <laughs> oh, come on! 
Notches. Notches. It's the second notch in the soda. People want to know what was in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm dying to know. <laughs> There's going to be a couple of redacteds. <laughs> I can't wear this top. You got to switch to the other oh, hat. You want to you want to wear my purple hat? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. I was trying. Get out of my business. <laughs> I'm not in your business. I was inviting you to enter mine. Why would I? <laughs> you're the, you're villain. the villain. Is that why you're vilifying her? I'm the villain in my own story. That's the song from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> Javelin of Redacted. Oh my god. Uh, Properties. But it has I'd rather rock. not hear any of it. <laughs> if it flips heads, I will play Alien this way. Because, no. and if it flips tails, I will play Alien this way. Sick. Alien needs to talk to you about, like, it's soon. Oh, we're gonna talk happen. more about this shit? How do we do? The clerics are gonna talk attack so much. Them. Um, I mean, could five of us take out the whole gorilla? Yeah, yeah. For sure. It's a pretty small, <laughs> modest operation. <laughs> I think Roll five of us plus Daphne. Tears. Yay. Good, Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi. back. We hope you had a nice break. Did we have any winners? Someone got so Someone got close really with a close. very silly. Oh, answer. that was the uh, that was the sixty nine. It was, but the guess was four twenty six nine, but it was four twenty two eight or something. A winner in my uh, heart. <laughs> Wait, so they got two numbers out of four. Somebody almost won with the guess four twenty sixty nine. Mm. Awesome. Which yeah. is great. I wouldn't put past that. <laughs> They're not rigged. We did it for real. It's yeah, we did. It's true. Yeah. It's true. We did. We did it for real. Um, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to be diving back in before we do. Yeah, I got to thank some people. Hold on. Here we go. Um, okay. Ali Slayer did 100 bits. Oh, Ali Slayer, I hope you're oh, hi. Oh, oh, happy birthday. birthday. That random Twitch guy did 900 bits. Thank you. If I believe in you, thank you. I believe in you too. Ali Slayer did another 200 bits. That random Twitch guy did another 200 bits. Aww. Golden Necker did 510 bits. That random Twitch guy gave out five community subs. Oh my God. It sounds like I'm just saying that random Twitch guy. Yeah, like that. This random guy. Um, Ali Slayer, another 200 bits. That random Twitch guy, 300 bits. Is this a friend of yours, Ali? <laughs> Ali Slayer, another 300 bits. That random Twitch guy, 400 bits. Big shot. Ooh, it was a bit more. That random Twitch guy, 200 bits. Stung resubscribed. E kept resubscribed. That random Twitch guy, 100 bits. Half baked. Uh, did their sub, which I think I already got. Oh no, gifted another sub. So thank you all. Thank oh you. Oh, thank, thank you so guys. much. Oh my god. Was that bits for every time that Kate and Morna were fighting with each other? Is that because we? Ooh. That's what it was. Fight. My fight. money's on fight. fight. Yeah. Wait. Were they yeah, bets no, no, on who's gonna win in a fight? <laughs> my money's on Kate. That bitch can't get hit. It's <laughs> literally impossible. She can talk yeah. shit. She what got happens? achievement. She got that exact. What about when she fails this throw? Okay. <laughs> Rage. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, we return to the lobby of Paramount Lodgings. Uh, TC and Morna finishing up a meal, coming down the stairs, Ilian and Doxley, and then returning inside. It kind of with sort of a just kind of a look on her face, like she might have just kind of seen something, although you're not sure what. Kind of coming in through the front door is Kate. So you all reconverge here in the in the lobby. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> yes. Take your time. Yes. Uh, no, actually, don't. <laughs> well, take not your a time. ton of time, but. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, uh, do the Monteros know that you're coming with us on this, and will you hopefully get payment for it? I just want to make sure you're settled. Did you tell them that they might that you might bring along another? I haven't talked to them. We did. I did not. It will be fine. They wanted to meet with you. Yeah. So they did want to. Just meet. throw in that you helped. I mean, I am the one who probably got the best look. Our attacker, and, and I mean, if you remember the brave way I threw that, pitched that yeah. bottle. No, as as we walk, come come on, yeah. come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. As we walk, <laughs> now that you mentioned it, they're being <laughs> hurried up. Okay, okay. All right. sure. I'm sorry, but I don't think I paid scout. for this. How much was that? <laughs> sure, it was one one and a half silver. One and a half silver. Um, <laughs> now that you mention it, it does seem like there are a lot of people here looking for services done, and we should be. Riding this wave of coming in all heroic from defeating or pushing away a cleric. So if we all want to stick together and do a couple contracts together while this iron is hot, I recommend it. I don't know if you've had that kind of feedback, but I certainly have. Uh, yes, I suppose, but I, I, honestly, I've also found it to be the case that, and I think we all saw with Ace, that spreading yourself around sometimes doesn't go well liked. 
I... There are people here who wish to have the people that are with them and the people, those are their people. And perhaps we do not desire to be someone's person. I think... I, oh no, go ahead. Um, I mean, as a group, we are doing a lot of good things so far, and maybe we can establish ourselves so well that we don't need to be affiliated with someone. It's like, ah, get that group for this job because they're the best in town, as in be our own people. Who should we not be aligning ourselves with? Who have you heard? That, I cannot say that for myself. What I can say is that at least Mr. Bison doesn't like it when you are going around and doing jobs for other people. If you are his, you are his, is from what I understand. I'd say we should also be careful of doing too many jobs for Izzy, though I haven't met her yet. I have. I was what? told explicitly <laughs> that we should be careful of doing jobs for either. So they both like to have their people. Where are you guys if getting this you, information? Our list of clientele just keeps getting slimmer, I guess. No, no. He said it I, o- I only mean to yeah. say that we can take jobs from them, but if we Don't do commit. too many, then we will be known as their man, their woman. So we just skip around and do what if we If you wish can to ha- be your own person in this town, then yes. I do. I think that's a great idea. Anybody hear that about the Monteros? Well, like, getting on their side would be bad for the yeah. Izzy Bison people. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about asking um, my friend over at the Merc Hall if she had any information on whether or not it'd be good to do a job for the two of them. Um, but she didn't explicitly mention them when I talked to her about it a bit ago, so. You have a friend at the Merc Hall. I do. Excellent. I heard you met her. I dropped by. And how did that go? (laughs) It went all right. We had a nice conversation. Mm. I'm not exactly on a job for her right now, but... But the door's open. Yes, Yes. I hope to be. The Monteros mentioned the Merc Hall. I'm not familiar with what goes on there. What's their duty exactly? You show uh, me it was the first. flyer I found, and I'll give it to Doxley. I don't care. <laughs> 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 Ilian's gonna sneak a peek too. Roncolo, Mark Call, serve yourself by serving your community. That sounds like up your alley there, El. But it says, but I would like to point them. out, it says, <laughs> no, I, I only heard the advice about Izzy and Bison. It said, good way, low risk, wages paid to a third party on the event of your death, which seems to imply that it is not low risk. I mean, well, that's just their due diligence. You like, you've got to slip guess. on a rock the wrong way. Yeah. They have a variety of tasks and jobs that they will send people out on from higher to lower risk. I have a list of some that oh, nice. they are looking to achieve at any point when we have some downtime, maybe looking for some money. Did you bring spices to the Merc Hall? Spices? It says bring spices. Oh, yeah, if you provide the spice. Yeah. Elian, do you, did you pack your spices? I have a, I mean, not very many from home, but. I you think it is uh, an expression, perhaps. You know, like um, any old sock can find an old shoe. Um, yeah. You put dinner on the table. I and think we we'll all provide the spice. We all brought the spice to that troglodyte cave, did we not? Oh, you're talking about like the spice. Yes. It's an expression. I I think. Huh. I believe there oh, are things that go on at the Merc Hall. <laughs> that are even a bit more underground hmm. than what I may have witnessed in my one stop there. Oh, underground. great. Something spicy. Like don't get involved spicy or so like? Like for is... a specific skill set, perhaps. Oh, it's not an expression? Okay. Are they just as um, loyal dependent as the rest of these people? Do they expect you to only do work for them? You know, I, I couldn't necessarily tell that, but I, I don't think that they like to necessarily align themselves with one particular pillar of the camp. I feel as if I've heard someone say that in casual conversation before, so well, I'm just... The, you're still on the spice thing? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I agree. I think maybe if we just skip along to each, like, one for the Merc Hall, one for Bison, one for Izzy, one for whomever, and then... Like a lazy Susan, you just go ah. round and round. And yeah, and you get the jobs done, and, and then everyone at all at once yeah. is like, this group gets things done. You know, Ilian, you seem know. very different than you did this morning. Uh, I suppose I was in my thoughts a little bit this morning, but. I don't 
think I want to do that exactly, but let's take this job for now and, and we'll talk about the next one after that. Well, speaking of which, I did want to talk to you all about, um... Are we at the stones yet? <laughs> we're like, we're like we forever. Did you guys go to the detention pad? I didn't know. Uh, yeah, 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 I want to start heading yeah. <laughs> I guess we're yes. following the two elven yeah. siblings. Yeah. We'll say you guys have headed out okay. toward detention pass. So you are walking along there, yeah. Cool. So, um, I don't, I don't know how you all feel, but I don't feel great about this whole goblin situation. We did accept this job to get them out, but I think there can be more communication about, hey, do you guys mind stepping out? And then maybe we can, as Dr. Lee said in the meeting, you weren't there, but we could perhaps buy back that building to help the goblins out or come up with another plan to help the goblins out. They're like It's not just a or kill them or kick them out and then we're done with them. Did we could disguise ourselves and warn them to leave the building and then burn it? I don't want to burn the building. Didn't What's we there? agree to burn the building? I think they said we could. No, they asked us specifically. Did they to burn say the to building? burn the building? Well, why would they? They don't want us going in the basement, so there's probably something good in the basement. So why would we burn the building if there's something in the basement? We definitely can't burn the building without going in the basement. I, I'm they sorry. Don't go in the basement. Did you not all get a detailed we did. description of this mission <laughs> before you left on it? So, TC. They, they, I don't know if some people don't remember. <laughs> they did, in fact, say to burn it. They don't care how you get the goblins out, but they did. They Seems want it gone burn. so that the goblins don't just come back and occupy it again. So it's a waste of lumber <clears throat> work. Well, I brought my tinderbox. Got some torches. Minister, <laughs> um, well. how upset will they be if this place has not burned to the ground? I, I suppose if they said. We said we'd do that for the job, so I guess so we're burning we should it down. do it. All if right. it was farther out of town, I'd say we could lie about it, but it's too easy to go and check our work. I... What's stopping us from just setting this thing on fire with the goblins in it, and then they have to vacate? They're usually smart, right? Enough to get away from fire. Enough to know that fire kills you. They are indeed it is... smart. <laughs> <laughs> It is the middle of the day. If we came with torches well in view, they would see us coming and perhaps vacate. How much harder would it be to simply have a conversation That's with them I'm first? I just no, that is fine. Okay. Do we know how many goblins we have? No, that's like part of the man. mission is to do that. And also running into uh, uh, the, the scout, Mr. Morton, um, is seeing if he's okay, because he was sent out this morning um, and he hasn't returned uh, from the Monteros. I think Morton I mentioned scout. that. Yes. Um, that's, that's the mission in brief. And, and sorry, the basement? Yeah, can we decide as a group that we have to go in the basement? They specifically said no. They and, did say no, don't go in And the they seem important people to knock it on the bad side of. They also seem like really rich people with a lot of secrets That's and possibly true. valuable items. And what protects valuable items? Things that could kill us or whatever if we're not supposed to be in a place we're supposed to be. You know, since when are you afraid of something that could possibly kill you? Not afraid. <laughs> but it's not our job to go into the basement. Perhaps I'm old fashioned, but when someone pays you to do a job and they give specific instructions on how it is done, you don't typically then agree to said job and change the entirety of the contract. Yes, that is how I am familiar with jobs working as well. I could see a loophole where we complete the job and then return and go to the basement because they set up for the job, don't go down for the basement. There could be a bit more leeway, like, oh, I thought that was just for the job, and like, ah. I didn't hear them say it. That's true. TC, not you too. You're <laughs> the only one on my side. No, I, I agree. Well, thank I you. Agree. On thank you. Side. I see you. I hear you. You are seen and heard. <laughs> thank you. I agree. I'm, I'm not you're saying. on my side too, but you're useless. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I no. meant. But and it's true. I think. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just get the job done first and... I say we scout this as best we can to first, without letting, making ourselves known, see how many. Okay. It's a if you, first time. I, I am honestly a little bit against doing any kind of talking with these people. Then they will know it is us when we burn the place exactly, down. Exactly, and they have, they would have, they have no reason to give up what they have. We, we are offering them nothing. Unless you have a lot of gold you're willing to give the goblins. 
No, but perhaps a favor down the road or anything that I could give them. Because I don't believe anyone has told them, hey, you're not supposed to be here or whatever. If there's signs that are clearly labeled, don't set up camp, this is the Monteros, that's a different deal. They are breaking the rules. And so that can be talked about. But if well, they hadn't been spoken to about this, they don't know any, they hadn't known any better. It's just a building not being used. Oh, well, I'd scout it, but I'm almost positive there are signs. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll see as we approach. What if we scout it, and then we try to sneak into the basement before we burn down the whole building? T to really do structural damage, a fire from that started in the basement might be the best way. Then the Monteros would know that we were in the basement. Mm, I mean, possibly. They obviously don't want us in the basement because there's something important. I wouldn't, we should burn that down. It was already. a suggestion to not go in the basement? No, or like, no, they said, don't go in the basement. Like, they yelled at us to not go in the basement. don't go in the basement. And bad. you're not even remotely curious. Curiosity is not part of the equation. I, I'm very curious, but uh, perhaps you can find what's in the basement by getting on their good side. They yes. obviously know a lot. Curiosity killed the Kate, I guess. Yeah, you should be careful, Kate. You ha actually, you are very curious about everything, and that's like you could get into trouble about that. That is what I was I'm just saying. Say. I'm not meaning to. I know it didn't come out that way. It was very. It was too short. But that is. Ilian has said what I was trying to say. I'm gonna turn to TC. <laughs> <coughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I would love to know what is in this basement. Let's get a good look at this place first. See how many goblins are there. Deal. Hey. I'm so glad that we're all being so communicative with each other. Mm. Great for a fletchling group. Second day. A great thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Day two. <laughs> Out to detention pass you go. <clears throat> this time you have the intent to deviate in a different way than you did when you were at Delia's behest. Looking down the long road, you imagine someday you might make the full expedition to Little Hollow and see the prison for yourself. But for now, other business demands your attention. A few more people are out here than before. A mixture of Brunk Hollow citizens and clinkers, if their attire is anything to judge them by. Just a few hundred feet past where you broke north toward the gully, you see two rocks, as detailed in the Montero's diagram. A decent trail marker, given their unusual size and shape. The taller rock is well over six feet tall. <laughs> it's a signal that it's time to brave the wilds once more. And as you walk, you look around at your unplanned companions and think about how things might have been different if you had wound up in a different assortment of folk in your caravan. <laughs> a departure one day earlier or later, and maybe you'd be having a much different experience in Broncholo or maybe you wouldn't have made it at all. Ooh. In town, some of you have cross-pollinated in your pursuits, but there's plenty you don't know about who they are, the company they keep. Out here, though, you've mostly been of one mind, at least in your commitment to the task. And you're encouraged that you've been matched up with people who have a good head on their shoulders when trouble rears its head. <laughs> Given the ambiguity of the diagram, you can't help but harbor some concern that you'll be wandering a bit as you try to find what you're looking for. How much is that two steps in that <laughs> <laughs> Two furlongs? <laughs> but thankfully, the aforementioned lake is not so small that it eludes you entirely. It takes maybe 15 minutes before you arrive, sort of, you can see the lake in the distance. <clears throat> in contrast to your northbound excursion, the landscape here is fairly open, more of a rolling plains than a thick forest. So you guys have the lake in your sights and you're wandering, you're off the road at this point, sort of trudging through the grasses, but it's not nearly as kind of densely packed with trees as it was as you were heading up into the downfield. So I don't hear any grick slithering. No, oh, give me a perception check. Oh, God. See a goblin that has a satchel. Uh, 19. Yeah. 19. Wait a minute. No grick slithering, mm -hmm. no beasts as far as you can tell. At one point you, uh, sort of see something moving out of the corner of your eye and you turn your head quickly and it's a little gazelle and the oh. quickness of your motion spooks it and it kind of bounces <laughs> away very promptly. As you look back toward the lake, with that perception check, it also seems like you're not the only ones bird watching at this particular mm. moment. Mm -hmm. Even with a gray sky threatening to open up at any moment, the herons are out here in numbers, just like the Montero said. 
identifiable from a distance thanks to those kind of coiled <laughs> S-shaped necks bobbing <laughs> up and down as they wade through the shallow water. There's a small humanoid creature uh. crouching in the reeds by the side of the lake, by the sort of uh, rocky kind of shore of the lake. And even from where you stand, you can practically hear the licking of its lips as it creeps hungrily closer to one of the herons, waiting for the perfect moment to pounce. So even you're kind of moving through and then TC kind of stops you because he sees something in the distance and you see a small little humanoid creature that is creeping towards one of these herons that's sort of wading out. <laughs> Possibly a goblin? Certainly small enough to be a goblin. But it might not be a goblin. <laughs> At this distance, could be a halfling or a gnome, something of a similar size. But and is this, uh, are we gonna, if we continue on our little shitty map, uh, are we gonna go around <laughs> them hey, or we right? We hard on this map. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, you see the lake and you know that you're kind of supposed to go a little further to the southwest from here. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. You can see the lake thing. Uh, yonder. Could be. One of the goblins out on a little uh, lunch hunt. As he points it out, you can now, they were moving very slowly, so it was harder to see from a distance, especially through some of the birds that are standing there, but mm -hmm. now you can see that there's a figure that isn't the same as those herons there that are. Small fella, heron hunting. If we wish to not be seen, perhaps we give him a wide berth. Are you trying not to be seen? Or we could thin out their numbers by attacking first. How far away are we? 200 feet. Oh, okay, we're pretty far. Yeah. This goblin has done us no harm. I see no reason to attack him. All right, just a suggestion. Wide berth it is. I can get a little closer. Uh, I, I feel like if we're going to leave him alone, we would rather not be seen by him. I, I'd like to just focus on getting closer to this house and finding Mr. Martin. All right. Keep your eye out, they might be skulking around. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Eyes and feet. As we progress progress past that dude, mm -hmm. I'll try to keep an eye on our feet six feet just to make sure he doesn't sure. immediately trail behind us. Yeah. Sure. Everybody give me uh, a couple things. Give me a perception check, everybody. That's oh Dirty God. 20. Oh, damn it. Oh. 13. 13. 7. 4. Come on, guys. <laughs> Sorry. And then I need everybody to give me stealth checks. Okay, I'll use this more lucky guy for now. Come on. Oh, yeah, disadvantage, disadvantage for my two armored friends. Um, oh! 14. Oh. Okay. Oh. Dirty 20. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. 5. <laughs> 7. Seven. Kate and TC, Kate and TC <laughs> are just like <laughs> <laughs> unaffiliated. Yeah. <laughs> just get down. Morna, what was your seven? Seven as well. Shh. <laughs> as you guys are moving through, it's kind of like a hilly sort of plains area, and the up and down of it with heavy armor, it's hard to move in a way that sort of fully obscures your movement or the sound of your movement, especially if you're trying to still you know, make good time, not trying to creep by at a very, very, very slow pace. You don't, to your knowledge, see the creature that was by the lake sort of pick up on that or anything to that effect, but even just by moving, you, you can tell when your armor's moving and, you know, that it's making a little bit of noise, so. Were the herons, like, uh, uh, Then no, alerting. they did not get spooked by the sound of you moving, so um, at this point, no indication that you've been spoiled or seen. Okay. Okay. You continue on forward, and as soon as you start the last leg toward this presumably abandoned tavern of some kind that the Monteros had previously commissioned, you, your fears about the weather quickly come to fruition. Heavy intermittent droplets, and you can hear them on Ilian's armor sometime, like a ting. <laughs> it's like an AC unit. <laughs> yeah, that's me. It's all AC unit. <laughs> Those droplets, the, the interval between them shortens, and you're soon mired in a full-on downpour. You're also learning what the Monteros found out the hard way, which is that because of the makeup of the soil here, that it's kind of rocky, water begins to pool very quickly. And in the blink of an eye, 
it's not just mud that you're laboring through, but murky puddles huh. that are sometimes much deeper than you expect. A couple times someone will step and sort of <laughs> step too deep into it, and then there's kind of water all the way up to their calf. On a better day, you'd probably have maybe a better tactical advantage for where you're headed. Or maybe the rain is playing to your benefit. It certainly does obscure the sight lines. Sure. But either way, the first sign that you're in the right place comes in the form of a flickering orange orb in the distance. A fire, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> and it must be a big one, given by how far it is and yet how clearly you can see it. The fire may be even possibly larger than one would safely recommend that you stoke so close to the timber of a tavern, but the goblins less concerned with uh, OSHA regulation. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some kind of fire burning, and based on the pulsing of the fire, the rain makes it a little hard to see, but there's some kind of wooden structure up in the distance, like a few hundred feet away. Um, and you can see some kind of campfire that maybe they're sort of gathered around. You can't see any creatures yet. It's, it's a little, it's just that kind of pulsing orange light. As we approach, can I also keep an eye out for like the seashells that I know Niall would be leaving around? Or Niall himself? You definitely can. Give me an investigation check. Shit. Eileen, you can make one too. Yes. You, you would know You would know to look for that as well. Lucky, lucky. Fucking nine. Four. Oh, brother, you're the smart one. <laughs> you just point them out and uh, we'll get there. <laughs> nine. No shells that you can see. No formations of shells that sort of indicate crunch, crunch, <laughs> crunch, crunch. crunch. <laughs> crunch. <laughs> well, I see that they have made a robust fire nearby, and while the rain does not help our intentions, perhaps there is a way that we trick them into thinking that they've burned it down themselves if the opportunity arises. That is an excellent plan. <laughs> See, I don't know how close it actually is to the structure. Can, can I tell how close it is to the structure? How close the fire is? Yeah. Give yeah. me a perception check. Are we actually going to be able to burn this place down with how heavy of a downpour there is? Nine. Nine. It's difficult to gauge. Um, okay. And with the rain, I mean, the fire doesn't look like it's going out. So there's a little bit of a hint there. It might be underneath cover of some kind. Yeah. And the interior of something could yeah. burn, but it might, yeah. you know, might not burn the whole structure down while yeah. it's pouring. I can get closer. Okay. I, I think I could as well, but uh, I think we all we all have a little room to get a little closer here still. But well, do we still we keep will up. go to a safe distance, all of us, and then the two of you can go Perhaps. even closer. Perhaps. Keep an eye out for any kind of um, non-goblin person hanging about. Right, right. That's the aforementioned scout. Yes. Yeah. All right. Who's creeping close? Not me. Okay, Kate and TC, go ahead and give me stealth. Can I activate Mask of the Wild now in the heavy rain? Or uh, yeah, like, give me the description ooh. of that exactly. You can attempt to hide even when you are only lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, mm -hmm. falling snow, mist, and other natural phenomena. You can indeed. Oh, give me your stealth with advantage. Can so I use cool. my special stealthy? You already mm -hmm. did your special. Thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're a special boy. Matt, how far are we away now? I mean, if you're just judging by the fire, like still a decent distance away. Like, okay. <laughs> like not trying to, let's go. Not trying to, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, let me... Sorry. You're such a dumb. That was an 18. Um, I mean, you're probably at least 300, 400 feet away. Because you're just seeing like a little... We can get like 200 feet out. 200 like, feet out. Yeah, 100 100 yeah, I mean, we can say that you guys creep out. up, but you're letting the two of them... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. loud yeah. bozos. What, what was your... Uh, <laughs> 18. 18. 18, great. Um, I'd like everybody to turn their monitors on. Oh, yeah, let's go! Oh, it's been so long. I'm so excited. We've just had Lord Dump after Lord Dump. <laughs> now we're going to kill some goblins. <laughs> I mean, more Dump! We're going to kill them all. Oh, right. oh whoa! Yeah. Wait, this Those is so cool! Cattails? Cattails. Oh my god, is it not turning on? Am I doing it wrong? I don't know. Yeah. Don't, don't turn off the bottom button. Right? Yeah, just, just hold it for like hold. a solid 87 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it does take a while. If it doesn't turn on, hmm. I can shall. see it up there. No, I shall. Uh, we there we go. Oh, there. Oh, I swear. What's wrong with your fingers? I 
impatient. TikTok, I'm getting you. Hold so, on. Uh, with uh, Kate and TC creeping ahead a little bit, we'll say that you guys are kind of just on the edge of this uh, sort of swampy area. You can see that the in between all the mounds, it's filling up with water. It's definitely holding water in this area. Mm -hmm. Right away, you can see that the Monteros probably did the right thing by abandoning this yeah. area. I mean, it, in a rainstorm, it fills up in a second. Fucking <laughs> So, in the distance, you can see right there, there's some kind of fire, and it does appear to be, you know, on the structure in some way, or at least out on a deck of some kind. And there's some sort of unfinished, maybe two-story structure off in the distance there. So that's what you guys can kind of see from your, here, you're even hiding in the reeds there. Oh. <laughs> oh, so that's what you guys see. <clears throat> All right, well, perhaps from here, do you want to stick together and count, or do you want to try to perhaps split off and meet around back and count as we go. Let's meet around back. All right. If I don't see you in 10 minutes, I'm gonna assume you drowned. I hope it'll be quicker than that, but. Okay. Right. <laughs> they turn away from each other. TC's dead. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> 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 you take like one step into one of those puddles that whoosh, yeah yeah like completely. <laughs> yep. Oh. Uh, um, okay, both of you begin to creep. Are you going in opposite directions? Yeah. So you're planning I'll, on great. I'll take Semi circling. The right. You take the left. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys begin to creep around the perimeter of this area. Both of you give me perception checks, and I need you to make them with disadvantage because of the heavy oh. rain. Disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Perception. Oh, two sevens, whoa. So that turns into a 13. 13. Wow. 13. 13, okay. Twins. Even with the heavy rain, you're looking, you're, you guys have been out in the wilds before. You look for signs, even if you're not gonna get a precise count, you look for shadows, you look for silhouettes, anything that might sort of distinguish itself in bad weather. One thing that makes it, anyone who's around the fire makes it pretty easy because if someone kind of moves by it, you can see sort of that glowing orange orb just get partially obscured there for a brief moment. It looks like there are at least three gathered around the fire Don't there. do that. Hey. <laughs> That's Jordan, I'll not Doxley shit. speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to that, as you move around the edges, there is at least two more that appear to be up on the kind of upper balcony deck that's up there. But with the weather and the further obstructions of the building, you can't see if anyone's on the yeah. interior of this as well. But so the, at least five that you can see for sure, right off the bat, three around the fire, two up top. We know there's a basement at least. <laughs> yes, and you do seem to, they have told you there was a basement, so you can't see the entrance to the basement yeah. or staircase, but possibly out there somewhere. Try to creep all the way around. Yeah, you guys get all the way around to the wide, pretty wide berth. Yeah. Like, you guys get all the way around to the backside, and you can see Kate kind of creeping in the distance, and the two of you converge once more. And that fire isn't like covered by something. Yeah, it, it's not directly covered the, because the mm -hmm. rain's kind of the direction that the rain's coming down. Oh, it looks okay. like the fire's getting hit by the rain, and then it might go out in a little bit. But it okay. has. It was a big fire. It was quite large, so it's taking a moment to kind of get suppressed by the yeah. rain. Yeah. I can only get eyes on three in the front and two on the roof. That's what I caught too. There, there could be another dozen or more inside. I'm more concerned about the rain. I mean, the rain is gonna give us more cover. But you, is it You're concerned about what? I'm concerned about burning down a wooden building in rain this heavy. If we set a, a blaze to the ground area, perhaps under an awning, I am sure that it will catch. Is it gonna finish the job in the way that we've been asked to, though? If we do this from the shadows, there's a chance that, yes, they notice it and put it out. Do we make ourselves known? Do we... just create a distraction? Go in the basement. <laughs> no, it's go in that basement. Do you, did you see an entrance? I didn't see... I didn't see an entrance <laughs> to, to the basement. That seems like going in the front door. And I don't think we wanna do that. At least not right away. And we're totally opposed to talking to them. <laughs> what have you got to say to them? What have we're you gonna got burn to offer the, them? Just that we're gonna burn the place down and they can leave or they don't have to. And that is when they attack and 
we are then dealing with both setting a fire and keeping our lives. I say we, honestly, <laughs> we're we're at the back there. Yeah. So you from guys where know. from where we can see, we don't see any goblins. Um, is there a window at the back? Is there, there is no window at the back. You can see in kind of up here because again, it's unfinished. Yeah. It's not sort of, uh, and there you can see up on that. But yes, there's no window on the back. This is what you're seeing. Pretty we're much. Right. This. C- could we? Could I or both of us attempt to climb up that window so we can peer in on top of the wall? Uh. You I mean, said, sorry, climb up the wall so we can peer over. It's conceivably possible, sure. All right, how about this? The first decision we make is do we start to take a closer look ourselves or do we report back to the other three right now? You know how loud those three are. I say we climb this wall and see if we can get a peek at anything as carefully as we can. Or I'll do it and I'll come right back down. could just literally try to start a fire at the base of this place right now. You really want to get a look inside? I'm just going to look up at the rain and just kind of be like... The Looking at the rain and looking... The out, any exterior wood is quite soggy yeah. at this point. Uh, right. Getting a fire to catch, you probably need it to be un, undercover in some capacity, right. under, under a roof or something. Have you got torches and tinderbox? You all have tinderbox. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I don't know if I carry that on me. You want to uh, uh, boost you up from here? That would be helpful, thank you. And then see if there's a way, either a way to help me up or... I'm just gonna take a look over. All right, all right. To start. And then maybe I'll motion if you want to come up too. Let's very quietly get up and see that we're not seen to the back of the building. <laughs> okay. Both of you give me stealth checks. We'll pivot back over to the other side. It's been a f- couple of minutes. It's been a few minutes since they left. So you guys are kind of off. Oh boy! Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, no, I want to hear it. 15. It's a natural one. Okay. Oh, Anthony, um, why? I'm so sorry. Why now? I'm so I love sorry. It. I love I'm it. never I getting in that basement. Well, I hope they've. Oh, he's got his card sitting there. <sighs> no. <Nice. laughs> yeah, have a moment to think about it. All right. Oh, you know him? Yes, uh, Niall Morton. Um, He's a, someone I, I knew from the outside, that we knew from the outside, um, and I'm hoping he's okay. Oh, I hope so too. Good, oh, I feel like Kate's gonna have to look in the basement. Oh. No. <laughs> Horn is like, she wouldn't dare. <laughs> she would. I've talked to her about this. I, um, <laughs> she, if we're planning on lighting this thing on fire, I'm not doing it with the possibility that Niall is in that basement. Exactly. Gods, why would he be? Oh, gods. And there's multiple goblins. I don't know if they could have... Gotten in and set up a, I don't know. I I don't know if they set a trap and he passed out or something. Like, I I just, I don't know. Let's just wait till TC and Kate get back to us and then we can figure out a plan Surely they won't do anything. (laughs) Rap. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. I will use my inspiration. Oh! In time. Oh, okay, so please. Okay, okay. Nice. Um, 23. 23. You're about to step in a puddle and you catch yourself, pull yourself back. I was giving you such tasty, dramatic <laughs> irony there. <laughs> I'm going to climb up, and if I see a ton of goblins, maybe we climb back down and we go meet with the others, okay? We, I suppose we should report back the numbers, yeah. But if there's no one up there, and then help we'll me see up. if there's a, yeah, we'll help you out first. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see if maybe there's a way we can get in. All right. And get to the basement. We'll see. Okay. All right. You get all the way up to the back here of this structure, and TC gives a look around, and then yeah, squats there by the side, puts his fingers down. Okay. He takes one step up. <laughs> Give me an acrobatics check with advantage because TC is helping you. <laughs> Which there. dice am I gonna use? <laughs> the best ones. Base. Do it. Yes. Nice. 24. Yes. Nice. TC waits for kind of a, an opportune moment. You hear kind of a and sort of spring her up during that moment of sort of rumbling thunder. Nice. And you scurry up the side there. You grab onto whatever kind of knots in the wood you have. The rain is kind of pouring down in your face, but you pull yourself up over the edge. And two things that you notice, first of all, you're immediately a little dismayed because from here you can't see down into the main. So you can't see if there's a basement, like a yeah. hatch or anything uh-huh. from here. However, 
there are indeed oh, four sleeping goblins oh, here God. in the upper area. Oh, they're sleeping. <laughs> yes, all four of those are sleeping. In fact, we'll even, we'll even Matthew. make them prone. How are their throats? Exactly. We'll even have them down as very good at sneaky attack. So this is kind of what you see. You peek your head up over, and immediately you start to see one of the goblins, and you, and then you listen, and you hear a little bit of. And then you peek back up, and you see those four sleeping goblins. And I can see that there's that open staircase. Yeah, there's a staircase leading down to the to the main level of the uh, tavern. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank Frankity, Frankity Frong. No, Frank Frank was in the other. Yes, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's out front. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna look down and be like. Um. Yeah. If their hand holds out here, or if you can you, follow her sort of yeah. route that she took a little bit. Give me an acrobatics check. This is like a V6. So. This is like a V6, V7, <laughs> a little dino. Yeah. yeah. Dirty uh, twenty. Dirty twenty. TC gives another quick look around. You wait for oh, a. Yeah. Dino running start. Yeah. Up the edge. Fuck you too. <laughs> At this distance, I mean, you guys are literally ten feet away from the closest goblins. Having any conversation at all would be risky. I'm just saying that. Ooh. Hand signals, you know. Oh, right <laughs> you can you can narrate it if you want. Oh sure, yeah. Anthony holds out two hands separately. Holds up a number one with one. Points to the two of them walking in a circle. Talking, chirping, and then Kate sits down, down and then forward. Up to <laughs> there. <laughs> Slit throats while covering their mouths with pillows. Yeah, that's all Anthony. Kate looks uncertain. <laughs> Kate thinks about them yelling. <laughs> punching. She's punching the air. <laughs> he's just switched his hands positions. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's walking again. Circle. We'll save it for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Try to. I mean, we're hanging off the edge at this point, or we. You're not like we're, dangling, yeah, but you're you're up. You're, you okay. just had your hands on that beam there, and you just yeah. poked your heads up above the beam. You could easily come up over the beat, and you have your you have your feeter and sort of footprints. And there's we see that there's a way down in. You come to. I mean, uh, the staircase. There's a staircase. Yes, and you saw that from the other side too. Like that goes it, down to the front. It goes down to the front. Yeah, we'll kind of wear the fire. That staircase exposed enough that I could still attempt to hide in the rain, mm. as I descend it and enter onto the main floor. Um, I mean, you're, it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't really be obscured in that way. Your stealth check wouldn't really be against the environment as the thing. Yeah. It'd be against walking on those wooden planks, uh, okay, okay, like okay, okay. making noise. At Fair. I wanna, I wanna look for any hatches, something that, in that top here that makes the way down into the underneath. This upper area? Yeah. Not that you can see. It's just the staircase leading down. What are these ropes <laughs> you're hanging around? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they look like they're left over from construction. Like yeah. like the building's unfinished, like this rope here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it goes up to the roof. Um, here, here, this. <sighs> yeah, it looks like, because it was still very much in the process of being, but it looks like you could climb that up to the roof if you wanted to. What, ab sick. what about <laughs> um, windows? Do we, there was none on the back. I mean, the, but, these are, you saw these when you were circling around. There, There's openings, but there, there's no glass there. But the first floor. Mm-hmm. There was, as you get closer, there's like this, let me get this uh, down a little further. There was this, again, it, like it was because it was under construction, it's not yeah. like fully open. That one doesn't even have a window. That's probably not one we could get through physically. This one, maybe. You'd be slipping through oh. it. <laughs> I think that's probably our better bet, so. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm just, that was Erica speaking. Yeah, if you're not, yeah, if you're not like about to vault up and over, you can also lower yourself back yeah. down and then have a quiet conversation. <laughs> slither, Get down to the back, slither. you sort of crouch by the back wall there and you can have a quiet conversation. There is not a good way inside from up there. I was suggesting we thin their numbers, but if you're not comfortable with that, we can take a peek in the, I saw a window when I came around the right hand side there, there was a type window we could peek inside. On the ground level? Yes, it's not 
<coughs> super convenient, but it is something. Well, I want to see it before we check back in with the others. All right, all right. It doesn't take long. You could, yeah. you guys are here, so you just have to kind of peek around the corner, yeah. and then you look around the corner and you see that. It looks like the window, like this, it looks like maybe this was originally meant to be another room off the main room, but because it never got constructed, now it looks like maybe it was being kind of boarded yeah. up or something. So there's a few planks there that are blocking the way, but there is an opening. With my back against the wall, I'm gonna like shimmy right on up to the side of it wait, and- Wait, uh. Did these tools have like a little mirror in them? Ooh. I don't <laughs> think so. Um, That's a good question. That is a good question. I think it says, here we go. Uh, you're gonna be pleased. This set of tools includes a small file, a set of lock picks, a small mirror mounted on a metal handle, and a set of narrow bladed scissors and pliers. Bingo. <laughs> you are so smart. Okay. And I'm gonna. <laughs> sidle up to the window there mm -hmm. and try to like just lift it up just to get a lay of the land to see if I see We'll have this be part of the previous novels. stealth check. You get to that sort of pseudo window, and at first you start to take it out, and immediately some rain droplets hit the mirror. You sort of, you wipe it, and then you do it like quickly, yeah, to try and keep it from the rain. And just in that quick moment before the rain starts to drop on it, give me a perception check. <gasps> oh boy, uh, 22. 22. As you get that mirror up, and then you quickly bring it back down, in that brief moment where you saw it, and you were able to get the angle to the inside. It looked like there were two goblins on the interior, mm -hmm. and they both looked like they were almost like, <sighs> like pulling on something on the floor that they're unable to pry loose. They dropped something heavy. No, I, uh, <laughs> okay. Very again, quietly. This fucking basement, there's two goblins inside. And I think they are ferociously trying to open some kind of a hatch, and they are having trouble with it, the two of them together. Well, that only makes about 11 goblins total, as far as we could lay eyes on, including the four that are asleep. Right. So, what I'm saying is, I do not think we are getting into this basement without A, zero goblins in the vicinity, <laughs> and B, I don't think we're getting in there without the goblins gone. <laughs> and B, C, A. Yeah. <laughs> Prefer to A. <laughs> um, uh. I'll say that. Now, do we, again, I will ask you, do you want to go up there and thin the herd before we report back? I do not feel comfortable doing that. I know that I cannot stop you. I mean, I would like to have you on my side with it. If you're not, I understand. You're not doing anything, and just because I want to know what's in that basement doesn't mean I want to go kill four innocent living things. I think we should go talk to the group. Let them know talk what we've seen. Group. All right. I'll say, given that you're not trying to count goblins anymore, you give it a nice wide berth and you make your way back to the group. <sighs> Eleven goblins, four of them are asleep on an upper level, two on top of the roof, Three standing around a fire, two in a downstairs interior doing what we think is trying to pry open the basement door, which appears to be very locked. Okay, but That's Niall, right. or Mr. Morton? Uh, I saw no evidence of him. Uh, no could be in the basement for all I know, but not getting in there without that place being clear. Okay. Well, even more reason to perhaps talk to him. See if they've seen him. All right. Do they seem on edge about anything? Or if we approach cautiously, that they may be okay with the conversation? I do not wish to speak with them. You personally, or us as a group? I, I, uh, both. <laughs> Four of them are asleep. This just looks like their house. They oh. have some, they must know something about, or maybe they're just insanely curious, but they're trying to get into the basement. We are all curious about the basement. Was there any signage about like Montero property? No trespassing. Uh, not that you've seen so far. I mean, you haven't gotten all the way up to the place, but yeah, there hasn't been anything thus far that has said that. 
Are y'all at all curious that this scout, friend of yours, is in that basement? Uh, I suppose it's worth a look. Um... Maybe we offer to help them open the basement. And if there's anything that we find inside, we agree together with the goblins on what to do with it. The only way I would be okay with that is if it looks like something had been tampered with already. That there's a chance that Niall actually is down there. Otherwise, it's not our business. Nobody noticed or recognized these goblins from another interaction that we've had. Nothing no, that we can we, offer we leverage not... and know their motivations, what we can incentivize them with. I have a bone. Them. I didn't see them that closely. Do they have weapons? Not that you, I mean, I saw. the only ones you got a really good look at were the sleeping ones, and they, they didn't have weapons. They weren't like sleeping with the weapon. But. Morna, I, if you have any information on what these bones might mean to the goblins, maybe now is a good time, considering I have a crumbly piece of one in my back. I thought you were going to get the bone checked out and examined. Didn't do that. Well, then no, I have no more insight. Other than they thought they might be valuable for potions. You truly think you can get all 11 of these goblins to vacate these premises just by having a conversation? There will be, if I have to, a threat of a fight, but that would be last case. Alien, I... Perhaps if we lit a small fire, it would get the goblins to move. They would never know we were here. But what if Niall is there? That's the only issue. God, I don't want to burn the place down. So it's, it looked as if it was tampered with the basement? They, it looked like they were pulling on whatever hatch there is. You couldn't see couldn't that. Get it. You could only see them like... They were struggling with the floor. Yeah. Although I assume they were trying to get into the hatch. Maybe they were trying to close it. It didn't look like they were didn't trying to close it. <laughs> <laughs> Different motion for closure. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, they're pulling. There's a good chance if we do burn it down, I mean, with a basement... If Niall is there, he, he wouldn't get. There'd be he a would, fumigation, perhaps. Well, he but would die of smoke inhalation. That is how fires work. If you set fire to maybe burn. the upper level first, give them the most time to have the goblins vacate while the fire travels down. Sneak and we, in and see if we can find Niall. Why are we so against just asking them? Just talking to them. I'm not against. I I just Elian. I genuinely. Yeah, that's it's not not gonna work. Not an option, but we're going to have to give something, and we don't know what they want, and... They would like a home. Well, aside from that, but yeah. Right. I'm going to go back around to the back of the building. If you truly have something to offer them, I don't. You've got about ten minutes. I don't. And I'm going to start taking out goblins on that top floor. We don't need to do that. We can simply light a fire on the interior. I'd rather have at least one or two less goblins when the fire when they notice the fire. How many in total were there? At least eleven. That is a lot. We could take them easily. No, we could. TC, not. what if, if I, to that what if I come back with you? We climb up the wall. I get down in the middle of those four sleeping goblins, and I light the fire. Like Morna is saying, give them an opportunity to wake up and leave before you start shooting people in the neck. They are going to attempt to put out the fire. What if we, uh, if Kate? Gets closer with you. Do you have ways to start fires from multiple locations? I've got a flask of oil. It's hard to put out a fire when it's ignited that way. That is true. We could drop it down the middle of the room and then on the staircase. And then try to get into a basement while we start to burn alive. Oh, I thought we were all just assuming no one cares about the basement anymore. I, I think we care about Mr. Morton. Thought y'all said We that could have a blazing fire going on that top Two po on yes. both halves of the, on the both top. sides of the top. Yes. Time will be of the essence, and I believe the goblins will try to attack us as soon as you try to go in there. How about this? I'm gonna I'm gonna show off two flasks, and I'm gonna start making my way. Two TC flasks of two flasks of oil. Okay. TC, oh, before you no, go, how about this? <laughs> if I will approach them, and I just want to find out about Nile, and if I don't find anything else out. I will fight. I will be. I will threaten them and get them. Try to get them to leave. And if a fight breaks out, a fight breaks out. I'll keep an ear out. Tell them you're alone and looking for your friend. 
Yeah, I don't want to be. Uh, I'm. This is your <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. No. <laughs> where, where it is like I don't really want to be seen, so I'm gonna sort of try to flank T with TC and <laughs> TC's like, stay what? back. <laughs> what? No, um, you can stay. You know that. I mean, you've seen this far, TC. A little more deft and delicate. You can keep a wider berth than TC. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna flank him and just sort of nod and say, "Sure, you got it. I'll keep an eye on TC." <laughs> TC starts to walk, but I don't watch. want the goblins. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> I'm going straight up the middle, um, and I guess uh, if it make us less scary. I can go alone, and if you guys are nearby, if something breaks out, I'll follow you from a distance. But if it seems like things are going all right, I'm gonna head around to the window, see if maybe I can get in. Okay. Head towards the basement door. Only if that makes sense. If not, I'll be right behind you. Okay. All right. I start the only unaccounted for is Doxley, where you had a... Uh, <laughs> Ilian's like... making an approach for the front. Uh, Kate and TC are going opposite ways once more, and uh, Morna is following TC. Guess I'm playing utility then, and I'll keep a berth, but I'll try to keep an eye on Ilian if I can. Okay, so following kind of towards the front, but keeping your distance. Yeah, like I'll try to be opportunistic with my movement too, like when there's thunder and stuff, to kind of muffle my sounds. Okay. Um, I need, uh, give me stealth checks from uh, Morna and uh, and Doxley, who haven't made them yet, and make them with advantage, because you guys are, are keeping a good distance Lord. and letting other people lead. Okay. Uh, sorry, you said stealth. Oh, sweet. Stealth Come with on. advantage, yeah. 17. 17. Oh my god. Natural one and a three. Okay. Oh. So, seven. Seven, okay. There's a sort of moment where everyone kind of checks in with each other and then breaking off. People, you can hear before you sort of separate too much, you can hear the light kind of splashing of feet in the puddles. Ilian steals himself. He starts to approach the tavern in the distance. How are you approaching? In what manner? In what? Um, oh my God. <laughs> honestly, just in, I'm both truthfully like looking and for Niall at any way, lying, anything. And just to give off an impression that I'm not here to fight, I'm looking and open to something that's not fighting. <laughs> I assume no weapon drawn. No weapon drawn. Just Are you just still just having it with you? I am. Okay, great, so the sword is still on your back, yeah. but not drawn. Yes. You start to get closer and closer. Another foot in the water. You make sure to take your time so that you give time for everybody else yeah. to kind of get into position. As Ilian is moving forward, you get, uh, we'll say Kate and TC kind of get around to the back again. Where are you guys positioning yourself until you see a signal from Ilian or some kind of, I mean, I'd kind of like to, can I get up to where I was basically hanging and maybe just have like fingertips so that they wouldn't see me immediately if they looked? And on the up, upper level. On the upper there, level, yeah, that I could vault up very quickly. On this, up here. Yeah. Yep, yep, you can do that. If I'm next to the window, would I be able to hear Ilian um, if he's talking, if he's like standing by the fire? If he was standing by the fire, definitely. That okay. would be very okay. close. And even if he, like if he approaches and they don't let him get that close, presumably he might shout because through the rain and stuff. So you have a pretty good idea that you'd be able to hear him. Can I hop up on that um, upper uh, left hand side of that like latch thing? You know that like, you're yeah. trying to get like here? Yeah, could I like squat up on top of it? Uh, you can't really stay on top of that. It's, it, yeah, it's it's thin, but you could be like at the red. You can like have your hands on it if your intention is to kind of like yeah. vault yourself through it and into the, <laughs> into the. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's where I'll be. So we're gonna put Cheryl coming out of the piggy hole. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that means. Uh, okay, like oh, right I see me now, here. me big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> tiny hole. <laughs> be quick one. <laughs> And TC is going to be around the back here. I'm going to do this. So you're kind of hanging just <laughs> around the back. Don't shoot the there. goblins in their sleep, please. <laughs> Sweet um, release. Oh, Morna yeah. will say has sort of kept her distance, kind of. Uh, yeah, I want to keep eyes on TC. You yeah. can see him as soon as he starts to climb the wall. You can see him pretty clearly from back there. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> and Ilian begins his approach. Oui. And Doxley's trailing him by a little bit while yep. still keeping an eye on him. Yep. 
So, you get a little further, and again, with the rain kind of coming down hard, the, your vision is obscured enough that you don't see any movement or anything. You get to about, we're gonna say about like 80 feet, where is that? Oof. So you are at about 80 feet, look at that. You get to about 80 feet away, and immediately you can start to see some of those silhouettes in front of the fire because of the light that it's giving off. And as you start to move, you're again, you're not trying to sort of sneak up on them, so you're walking sort of confidently and calmly. And as you get a little closer about that distance, you start to see the silhouettes kind of... It looks like they kind of confer with each other a little bit. And one of them kind of takes a couple waddling steps to, 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 along here. And he waits. How close would you like to get? Um, if I we see each other, or there's like a recognition that people are. It looks like he's kind of he's trying to protect his eyes from the rain. He's like he can clearly see that there's something out there. He's trying to determine what it is. There. Then I'm gonna start approaching him, but with arms up. Okay. Um, say so you'll get. Uh, is this about? 50 feet, yeah, a little closer, about 50 feet. Okay. You get to about there, and we'll say that Doxley also mirrors you a little bit there. You get to about there, and immediately you can see that he reaches down and picks up kind of a crude little short bow. Hey, hey, I'm not looking for a fight, I'm looking for someone. Can we talk? He's not here. Whoever you're looking for is not here. You haven't seen a sea elf? No. Can I? An insight check at 50 feet. You can try. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude's got the worst tell ever. 14? 14. There was the ever so slightest sort of hitch in what he said, like a pause before he said it, that made you think that, there was almost a look there where he was confused, where he was like, did I see a sea elf? You're a sea elf, so I yes. Do. But it's possible, uh, yeah, that he may He's have. full of shit. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. Do you mind if I give a look? A look where? At this building. Just to make sure my friend isn't here. What do I get? We can talk about that if you'll let me get closer. No. Listen, I'm here on two parts. One for my friend and one for business. Now what you'll get is you get to leave with your life, and I mean that. Make an intimidation check. Come on. TC's making sure he's got like one hand of the oil. You like, can't hear exactly yeah. what he's saying, but you can hear Ilian's voice. You can hear him shouting. That's 11. 11. Fitz Gargle gets something. I'm going to approach now. And I want you to know if you fire that bow, everyone, if you have friends and family here, will be dying. Is that something that you want to live with? You have an opportunity now to make a right decision. What do I get? Your life. No. I'm gonna take a few more steps and walk toward him. As you take a couple more steps forward toward My hand's the, still up. Yep, that's fine. Did I hear that no, perhaps? Yes, yeah, you did. <laughs> and in addition to that, after he says that, you see him kind of look around, and he looks like he does kind of a, a sort of quick furtive nod to the guy behind him, who goes over back a little bit, and then reaches up and grabs a little rope, and there's like a ting, 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 ting. And immediately, TC, you can see like, Goblins start to just sort of groggily wake up a little bit. I'm flipping up over the top there. Up. Okay. And there's two things that are gonna happen. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go. Oh. Right. Um, uh, an attack and a fast hands. Okay. Uh, let me do this. As um, that is, I will ask. Uh, fast hands. I can <coughs> throw. I can certainly throw a bottle of oil, uh, a mm -hmm. flask of oil. But like lighting, like. Those would be those would be those two free actions. Okay. Yeah. And you can't eat throw as a it can't be like a weapon attack, but it doesn't sound like that's what you were trying to do anyway. No. Yeah. Um I mean I'll say, I mean, you had the oil ready to go. Yeah. You can you're trying to toss it and light it is what you're trying to do. But can I do that and make an attack with a weapon? Um Yes. You can make the attack first. And then, as that's kind of happening, I mean, they're waking, but I'll, you can I'll, try. I'll actually not. I'll actually wait to light it, but okay. I will throw it. Okay. So, 
I'm jumping up and I'm um, short sorting into the closest one. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> as that's happening, Kate, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> or did what the, is the other people doing that are not TC and Ilian? Did the um did the the goblins that were in the basement or did they hear or sorry, in the on the first floor did they hear mm-hmm. that are they starting to head towards the front? It's Take what you thing. could when you were standing near the window, you could hear some of that like <laughs> like clattering and after the bell started ringing, <laughs> it sounded like they dropped what they were doing. You can't see inside, but it sounded like they dropped them. I'm gonna hold. Okay. okay. I guess I'm in the wrong, there are no goblins back here, which more, <laughs> much to more in his dismay. We're kill. We're kill. She's in limbo. Yeah. Yes. Uh, are you, so you're seeing TC like, As soon as like, TC oh, vaults yeah. up, yep. I'm gonna run t- back towards the front to where the d- goblins were, as far as I can, I'm gonna run. Sure, we'll, we'll give you the whole 60 though, that's yeah. movement and dash there. Um, okay, Doxley. Um, Doxley's gonna try to get a little bit to the, what is that? Uh, east. Um, okay. Ideally, she's gonna try to like approach this building and sort of like vault over the side of that railing system there on the on the porch. Like I'm, I'm here thinking long or term. on the other side. Yeah, that side. Okay. Um, trying to like. I mean, we'll give you sixty feet in that direction. Sure. It takes you about there. Yeah, I'm gonna later down the line. I'm gonna try to like get into the middle of the building and get in the middle of the fight. Great, you got it. So all that's happening at the same time, I'm gonna have TC do his here. Um, you're gonna give me, he's unconscious, this one, the other ones are waking. Yes. Give it with advantage. Okay, yeah, because it's a melee, it's a... Yep, um, it's melee, and uh, it's with advantage, and if it hits, it's an auto crit, and it does have sneak attack. <laughs> oh <Maybe>. boy, <laughs> let's go. Um, nice. It's an effing can go. Uh, we're gonna honor uh, that one's a- uh, dirty 20 to that hit. Will hit. It's an automatic crit. Good night. Go ahead. So we're yeah. doubling the dice. Sweet Sally. Uh, uh, okay, six, seven, eight, nine, 18 plus four is 22. <laughs> you draw the blade and all the greenish black goblin blood is on along your blade and the other goblins that are waking <laughs> start to go work themselves up into a frenzy and that's where we're gonna start. Oh! <laughs> Before we get into the thick oh, of it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> in the basement. That one goblin <laughs> is thoroughly eliminated. Oh, yeah. TC's oh still God. working as well. Got for the front. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like butter. Tastes like sneak attack. Big motherfucker. <laughs> and that like is where sneak we're attack. Oh boy. Oh, uh, get up. Get in here. Boo, <laughs> <laughs> poor bro. Oh, That's where we're gonna pick it up next week. Hey, Excellent job, wow. everybody. Um, a, a conflict to come in here with the with the yeah. goblins. Yes. Um, he didn't give him anything. He wanted something. <laughs> he wanted. <laughs> he was like, give me. I love how I nobody think. was like, offer him the crumbly bone. No one cared about the crumbly well, bone. Maybe they wanted to keep the crumbly bone. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could you make a, oh, sure, here I come with a Snargus flargan. It's worth <laughs> 17 blurbal snurbs. <laughs> you don't even want to lie about it. Right. No. He's, He's a sweet boy. We have to right. stop making him our spokesperson. You not lying about it just cost 11 goblins their lives. That's, that's also yeah. very true. The blood is on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> GC's like, this is all you. <laughs> You did this. Um, <laughs> plenty to talk about, which is great because we got Notch and Soap. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah, if, you if you're here and not subscribed, it is there's a little Which preview time. you can get. Uh, but after that, you'll yeah. And uh, if if we get any subscribers on TikTok, we'll stay live there. But if you also prefer to be on Twitch, we'll be hop on over doing here, it over there too. Um, we will have too. we'll have the uh, we'll have the chat up. Yes, come. Um, questions. Yeah, we're gonna take the briefest of breaks. Uh, we'll we leave the cameras on, but the mics off. If you see us but don't hear us, we, we will. We'll turn them back on, but we're just gonna play a little music and quickly take a break and then come back. Also, for everybody viewing, there's a cute little thing at the very end of the episode that you'll get to enjoy. Yeah. <gasps> Is it new? Oh, yeah. oh, oh I wanna know why. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see. Watch it later, I'll show you later. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna sit here and watch it. Awesome. Um, yeah, we'll come back. Uh, do you wanna thank people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me thank, because yeah, some yeah. people don't be able to. They're gonna, gonna go. go that, that, this yeah. late. Yeah, yeah or go to the. Um, scroll, 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 Baby scrolly, scrolly, scroll. Um, what time did we take a break? Uh, oh my gosh, Ally Slayer and that random Twitch guy are going back and forth. It is unstoppable. It's a battle. 300 bits for Ally Slayer. That random Twitch guy did, oh gosh, 1,200 bits total. Oh Golden Dagger did 510. And then I can't remember. Oh, that was at, that was at the break with the five community subs. Thank you so much, oh that random gosh. Twitch guy. Thank you guys. Very, very awesome. Happy. You're wonderful. Delightful. Um, Thank you. All right, quick break. We'll be back. We'll chat. 
we'll discuss theories. Plenty to discuss in the first half, as well as. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Pokodoko, regardless of what we say at Nosh and Soda, Pokodoko on our Discord should be making a little forum post about. Sp- discussion. Thank you. Yes, you phrased it much better than I did. Um, so go ahead and join our Discord and have yep. some fun in there. Maybe we'll pull that up at some point during Nosh and Soda, too. So, and yeah. we, people have had a little bit of trouble. If you're new to the Discord, it should definitely be there. If you've what been the in the heck Discord is for a Discord while, doing? I don't know, but you may have to go yeah. to the channels. Um, uh, 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 oh, I'm doing a bad job. Um, you have to go to the permission, the channel permissions. You have to like add the channel. No, no, it's more about uh, browse channels. You go to browse channels, and then you can um, select all. Or something? Select all. Yeah. Yeah, because they're just not appearing all the yeah, stuff. Yeah, all the TTN official, fo- the follow category, and the TTN official. Check all those boxes. Okay. If for some reason you're not seeing stuff. Sweet. We'll be right back. All right. Oh, wait. Whoa. Oh, oh, we just gotta get there and we'll be right back. <laughs> Yay. Come back. Welcome back to the Brunk Hollow Powerball. <laughs> you, you already fucked it up, not me. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brunk Hall of Powerball, where red, blue, purple, and green could make all the gold you could all hope for. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brunk Hall of Powerball, where red, blue, purple, and green could make a whole lot of gold. Remember, get your guesses in now before the first roll. Welcome back to the Brunk Hall of... What is it? Welcome back to the Brunk Hall of Powerball, where red, blue, purple, and green can get you a whole bunch of the gold. <laughs> under the stair, under the chair. Oh, that's a, there's another one. There's that one, and then there's the one under the chair. Welcome back to the Brunk Hollow Powerball, where red, blue, purple, and gold can make you a shitload of <laughs> gold. My dog-faced assistant will now provide the dice. Now, my assistant will kindly provide the dice. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> now, my hideous assistant will show us where dice come from. 